Sparrow, an M.C. Romance, Outlaw M.C. Book One. Written by Ethan Egeroff. Narrated by Randy Fuller. Sparrow, Outlaw M.C. Book One. Chapter One, Sparrow. I park my truck out back, like I always do, and wait for Roland to start bitching about it blocking the path for his bike. I've never seen a dude get that upset over trivial things like driveways, especially Roland. We never cared about material possessions before, because we would end up losing them anyway. That's why he cares so much about this house, because he worked so hard to keep it. And it's why I was less than excited to move in and intrude on Roland's pride and joy. But he managed to convince me. I get out of the truck and look around. Roland is nowhere in sight, so I slip the key in the front door and walk in. Roland is standing in the kitchen. You're coming to the club tonight, right? Do I have a choice? I retort back to Roland, who eyes me from the other side of the breakfast table. I've spent the past few months with Roland attending meetings at the club. That group saved him from self-destruction, so I guess I had to join. At first I was a prospect, and now I'm a new member which just means they could still force me to do the shit they don't want to do. I head over to the fridge and take out some day-old chicken that Roland made. I've been eating his food without thinking twice about it, so I open the microwave and warm it up. Well, yeah, Roland scoffs, grabbing a beer. He is in jeans, and he's cut like he always is. Since he's the VP, he's almost always at the club and just came from there. The microwave shuts off. I grab the plastic container and a fork. Yeah, I'll be there, I answer, stuffing my mouth with the hot food as I lean against the counter and ignore Roland's glare. My brother and I have a simple relationship. We always look out for each other, but he has been the one bailing me out of trouble since day one. We left foster care when Roland was 18, and then he spent the next three years taking care of me until I was old enough to be on my own. I ended up hanging out with the wrong crowds, needing him to bail me out of trouble all the time. The last I got in trouble was the worst, because I really was being bailed out of jail in a bad situation with a gang running drugs. Good. For what it's worth, the guy's like having you there. He walks over to the counter, sits down, and sips his beer. I give him a funny look until I figure out what to say. I wonder why that is, I chuckle. I didn't get that vibe at all. It felt like they treated me like any other prospect or new member. Somewhat like shit, but not enough that I wanted to leave the group. Although I felt like an outcast, I still helped clean up the club garage, sometimes worked the register at the graphic t-shirt shop, and served drinks at the bar. I pocket all the tips I make, but it's not enough for me to entertain helping my brother out with rent. Come on, don't be an ass. I told you that the execs were the ones who convinced me to ask you to come join in the first place. You should see how they treat regular prospects. I chuckle. Right. I'm some sort of VIP just because you're the VP? I snort. Roland laughs, and I shake my head at him. Pretty much. Use it to your advantage. But don't think it will get you out of trouble if you fuck up. It doesn't work that way. He laughs. I nod once. Fair enough. Roland grabs the remote control from the counter, turns on the television in the kitchen, and sheds his jacket. I haven't gotten used to all his new tattoos yet. I have a few tattoos of my own, and I don't think I want full sleeves like he has, but I think I'll get a few more. Tank says you might be good at running some surveillance for us. Surveillance? I give him a side eye. Yeah, for some of our ops, keeping an eye on the other clubs. He says you're good at keeping quiet. Isn't that what you did for those shitty gangs back home? Roland asks me. I get a beer and take a few gulps to stall. Yeah, it was. But why would he need someone to break into places? I half laugh. Well, it isn't always just breaking in. I don't know, just think about it. He waves it off. I grunt, wishing he hadn't said anything at all. I'm all for being in the club and trying to turn my life around, but being useful makes people expect things from me. 
Expectations lead to disappointment, and that's worse than anything else. I've been the bad guy for a long time. I've been the letdown. I'm not keen on being the comeback kid who drifted back even more. Roland has picked himself up, made a life for himself here, and for some reason he wants to include me in it. I don't want to mess that up, but it's usually in my nature to. I'm going to shower before I leave. I finish my beer and head to my room, one of the guest rooms upstairs that I've taken up residence in. It's a good-sized room, and honestly, I can't ask for much, judging from what I'm used to. I shower and get dressed in jeans and a black t-shirt with a weird abstract design from the shop. I have my cut with my name on it and such. I'm not in any of the committees, so it doesn't have much on it, not even my club name. I couldn't think of a good name, and neither could Roland. His came from Tank and is yet to be explained. Rafe just sounds different to me. Spencer sounds better, but I'm not sure how much better. I lace up my boots, grab my keys, and jog down the steps. I'm right on time to get there early and do the boring task of stocking beer and cutting lemons. Hey, meet me out front, Roland calls from behind the staircase, probably in the living room. I frown and go from leaving out of the garage to the front door. His porch has a table on it that I'm sure he never uses. It overlooks his long front driveway and subpar shrubbery. His bike sits angled to the driveway, a big chrome Harley with divots on the seat and the MC logo pasted on the back cover. What's different today is that there are two bikes. What's this? I point, coming down the steps. Roland half grins and stands beside the almost matching bike, minus all the detailing. Your bike. I scoff. <laughs> My bike? The last time I rode one was a kid, 15 or 16. Roland took to it, clearly, and I've been on them occasionally at the club, but that was only to move them between garages. Yeah, it's about time you got one for yourself. Darius and I fixed it up. It's been abandoned in the shop for a while, he explains. I get close enough to the bike to see the sketching of the leather, smell the fresh scent of pine cleaner on it. So you got me a bike that will crap out, I smirk at him. He rolls his eyes and slaps my back, laughing. Yeah, right. You can just say thank you. I roll my eyes right back at him. He hands me the keys, and I swing my leg over the bike, getting used to the feeling. The seat is comfortable, the handlebars at the right height. I smooth my hand across it and half smile. I don't really buy myself shit anymore, not anything like this, stuff I don't really need. Roland and I got each other stuff for Christmas growing up, but that was just so we didn't go out of our minds about not having a family. This is different. The whole thing with the club has been different. He invited me into something he didn't have to, something I was never a part of to begin with. But now I am. And then he goes and does this. I know it's a nice gesture, but this feels like pressure. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. I shake his hand and we bump fists. He shrugs like it was nothing. No problem. I'll see you there. He gets on his bike and kicks off, gone down the driveway in seconds. I follow after him, starting to see what he meant about being on the bike. I feel every whip of the air, the give of the tires on the road at every turn. I control the bike. It doesn't control me. The club is kind of like that, too. And I start to get it. The drive is short, about ten minutes until we pull into the garage. It's nice, right? Roland shoves my shoulder playfully as we walk in. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. How old is it? I stuff the keys in my pocket. There are a few guys milling about outside. I nod at them and they do the same. Couple years, not bad. It must have been expensive, I mutter, glancing at him. He stops near the doorway and gives me a look. I got it covered. Yeah, but I don't want to feel like I owe you. Then don't, he shrugs, walking inside and effectively ending the conversation. It should just be that easy. I don't know how much it was or what his situation is, but it seems all right. The only way I can actually just not feel like I owe him is to ask if I would do the same thing if I were him. 
Chances are that I would. What's up, Spencer? Logan greets me from behind the bar. I nod at him, shake his hand from over the table. Roland goes off to the back room and I walk behind the bar. Not much. I've been sugar babied by my brother, I chuckle. Logan gives me a look, but laughs too. I take off my jacket and put it in the cabinet under the cash register. He finishes wiping the bar down. There were probably a lot of people here earlier. The bar is half full now with regulars that I see all the time. The women are here too. I've taken my pick, but to Roland's advice I didn't dive in too far. I know them by ass now, the way they strut around in tight denim, hoping to land one of the guys. It's just weird now. It used to be hot. I didn't come here to find a girl or anything like that. Roland and I are the same. We're probably going to end up alone, but that's beside the point. Being in the club, if we want it, it's out there for us. But I know better because I caught on quickly. What the fuck? Logan laughs. I turn to him and start counting the beers in the cooler like I knew I was going to do. Yeah, he got me a bike, said it's been hanging around in the garage, I explain. He nods, wiping his hands. He tosses the rag aside and leans on the bar. He's taking his cut off, too. Logan is one of those taller guys with leaner muscles and has one sleeve of tattoos on his right arm, some of them colorful. He actually looks the most normal out of all the guys at the club, appearance-wise. I know what you're talking about. He never mentioned it, though. That's nice of him. Yeah, he does shit like that. I stopped counting and stared at the paper. It feels weird to think about it, so I try not to. But he always looks out for me, and it's different than the other times, because I don't actually want to mess this up. You used to talk about you a lot before you came by. I mean, you two make me wish I actually got along with my brothers. It's good shit. I half smile. Yeah, it is. I go back to counting beers, and he helps me restock them. The bar starts to fill up again, and we scrap the preparation shit to take care of the people actually here. The regulars are here, and I strike up a conversation with them like I always do. Some of them are just ordinary people who have day jobs and families. They like to live vicariously through the club, too. Others are what I'm used to, wayward-type folks. When there is a bit of a calm in the storm, I fold rags and balance the drawer midway. I'm good at math. It was the one subject I passed easily in school. But this is still just basic counting shit. I haven't been accused of stealing yet, so I must be doing it right. I'm going to run and get more quarters, I tell Logan. He nods, and then I walk off, behind the bar. I pass by the pool tables. A woman I haven't seen before smiles at me, and I smile back to be nice. But there's no way I'm starting that. I continue down the back hall, escaping the noise of pumping music and clinking glasses to get to the supply closet. I have to use a set of keys to get inside. I pull the chain of the overhead light and look around the dusty, possibly molded room for the change drawer. We have more change at the beginning of the week. Being Friday, I might be out of luck. I find the drawer, bend down to reach for it. Are you stealing? I stand up and almost hit my head on the rack above me. The voice came out of nowhere. A soft, feminine voice. I grab the rolls of quarters and turn around in search of it. Uh, no? I squint and find the voice in the half-darkness. It belongs to a young woman, probably my age, too. She crosses her arms and stares back at me. It raises her t-shirt over her jeans, exposing a bit of her navel and a belly button ring. I raise my brows and find my eyes back on her face that is scowling at me. It's kind of a familiar face, but I don't know why. Her light brown hair is curly, probably down to her waist, but I can't really see that. I work here, if that's any of your business, I chuckle. She shifts on her feet. She's wearing a shiny purple pair of boots, suited to ride a motorcycle. But I've never seen her around here before. It is. She drops her hands and steps into the hall when I start walking toward her. She does a once-over of me, like I didn't notice. I shut the door and stare down at her. She's short. I blink to get away from her soft brown eyes. Well, I've never seen you around here before, 
I shrug. I haven't seen you around here either. She raises her brow, purses a set of glossed full lips at me. Well, I guess it goes both ways then. I gotta get back to work. I add emphasis on the word and grin at her. She only scowls back in response. I walk off with a weird shiver at how familiar that look is. What took you so long? Logan asked me. I walk behind the bar and laugh, putting the coins in the drawer. I ran into someone. Huh? <laughs> he laughs. I turn to him, leaning on the bar. Some girl. I've never seen her before. She accused me of stealing. I laugh at the memory, her face running in my mind. Hmm. What'd she look like? I've seen almost everyone come through here. I sigh. I don't know. Brunette? Cute? I'm not a fucking artist. I chuckle. I turn and see that head of hair again, walking across the pool table. She looks like she's storming off from somewhere. My eyes follow her until I lose sight. That's her. I tap Logan's shoulder when he turns away. Where? I wait until I have a clear view and show him. He frowns and shakes his head at me. No way. Fuck off, man. Seriously. I frown. What? Is she already with someone? Not like I had any ideas, but that reaction made me want to have them. I watch her talking with Kit, another guy on the exec board. She seems to be nicer to him than she was to me. No, that's Tink's daughter. Chapter 2 Janine Do you have to do that every time? I look at my mom with a deep scowl. She just stares back at me with her passive-aggressive smile. The same one she used on Dad, except nicer. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, you don't always have to go. And maybe if you stayed here, you could help... Mom, I do not want to work at your bakery, ever. And I like seeing Dad. You can't keep me from him. But that place... She trails off, and worry mars her features. She leans against the hood of my car and scratches at her head over her curly hair that matches mine. Mom was from somewhere in Europe, her parents, her grandparents, but she refused to agree with that. All we know is we have curly hair and naturally tanned skin. Imagine how much fun I had in high school. I know, Mom. It's not like I'm going to become a criminal. I've been going there for years. I grab her hands and smile at her. She hates the fact that Dad is an MC. It was why they separated, but haven't divorced. We live thousands of miles away now, since I was 12 when we moved. I go visit him over the summer when I'm not in school, but Mom is mad that I'm spending more time there since I graduated high school and could stay longer. I took a gap year to figure out what I wanted to do. Now I'm 20 and no closer, and I'm still going to college in the fall to decide in a controlled environment. Right now, though, I'm going to visit my dad, like I always do. But now you are older, more susceptible to their shenanigans. I laughed at her. Mom, wouldn't that be when I'm younger, not older? I give her a funny look. She stares back at me with her green eyes that match mine, flooding with concern. I don't know. Plus, I don't trust his henchmen either. You know how boys are. She wags her finger at me for good measure, and I just laugh more. I know how boys are. They don't like me, remember? I reminded her I haven't once brought a boy home, rather sadly, but she just gives me the same look. Janine, don't be crass. Just be careful. I always am. I take my keys from her and open the driver door. The drive isn't that long, only four hours, and I usually make it in one trip. I decided to leave early in the morning so I could spend a half day changing my room there. Dad kept my room the same way it was, like I was still twelve. I humored him for a long time, but not any more. Call when you get there. She hugs me. I pull back and look at her. You know, you could come too, Mom. Fly out in a couple of days. Mark is perfectly capable of keeping the bakery running, I tell her. Her eyes glaze over in that way they always do when I mention Dad over the years. I didn't understand why they couldn't make it work. Mom obviously still loved him. She kept his pictures, and they're still married. 
but I learned a long time ago it didn't do any good to try and figure them out. I, you know, I can't leave my cakes. I'll see you soon, okay? Call as much as you want. Her voice cracks like she's about to cry, and I roll my eyes at her. I've got to get out of there before she convinces me to stay. Bye, Mom. I love you. I hug her tightly. I love you, too. Tell your dad I said hello, she adds, like she has to. I nod and get in the car to drive off. I pulled into town four hours later, stopping for gas at the convenience store. This town was so small the clerk knew who I was. An older guy, I saw him any time I came into town. He always asked about my mom, but he knew how my dad was doing. People in town really respect him, or fear him. I've yet to figure out the difference. After grabbing a slushy, I called my dad and told him I was on my way to the house, so he would be ready for me. It was a quick drive there from the gas station, pulling up to the cottage-style house brought back a lot of memories. I grew up here, when my parents were still together. I learned how to ride a bike on this street. Mom had a coronary when she saw Dad letting me drive his motorcycle. He was on the back, of course, but still. My last memory was seventh grade, the father-daughter dance. After they had a big fight, I wasn't part of it, but the next thing I knew we were skipping town and I only came back on the summers. I slung my duffel bag over my shoulder, grabbed my purse to grab my keys, and let myself in. Dad's bike was in the driveway, so I knew he was here. Dad? I called out, shutting the door behind me. It smelled like him in here, old man cologne and day-old food. The living room couch was still the old off-white color, matching the drapes and white kitchen cabinets. The place was all Mom's design, and I had no idea why he didn't change it. Hello? I kept walking over to the staircase, in front of the back door and deck area. His bedroom was on the first level. I figured he was maybe asleep or something and went upstairs. My room was as I left it, pink comforter and curtains, a Disney rug on the floor. I had a window nook with many pink pillows on it. I was that kid that loved pink. Now I can't stand to look at it. As I promised myself, I took out everything and replaced it, making two trips to the basement until I finished. All the while, Dad still hadn't appeared. It wasn't until I showered and got changed that I found him in the backyard. Dad, have you been here for the whole time? I smiled when I saw him. He was out back in his little shed where he worked on his bike and stuff. He was looking at an engine part or something, though. I grew up knowing what that was. Yeah, I didn't know you came in. My phone was off. He stood up and wiped his hands on a rag. Dad was a big guy. It's why the guys at his club called him Tank. I used to do it too when I was growing up, but Mom didn't like it, so I stopped. He smiled under his half-grayed beard and still looked rather youthful, his gray eyes shining and hair full and grayed. That's okay. How are you? He hugs me tight and I hug him back. A little suffocated, but I'm used to that. Good as I can be. The drive was okay? I nod. It always is. I drop my hands. He nods and sits back at his work table, eyeing the engine part. What are you doing? I sit on the other side. He says, Oh, nothing. Just keeping my mind busy. How's your mom? He asks sullenly. I realize that is what he's keeping busy from. She's good. She's talking about expanding her bakery, but just trying to save up. She still wants me to work there, but I don't know yet. I half laugh. You might be good at it. Customer service is one of your qualities. I giggle. I'm just good at pretending. How's the club? I ask him the same questions I always do when I get home. Good. We got a new prospect the guys love hazing. He chuckles. Hmm. Nice. I grin. I forgot to cook you something nice, but I have to go to the club tonight. I figured you did. I can order in. The drive has me kind of tired, so... Well, I hoped you'd come. All the guys really missed you. They ask about you, he says. And I know he means the ones as old as him. Men my age don't ask about me. I know that much. Oh, I know who he means. 
Jack and Al are his buddies that are his age. The others are like cool nephews or young sons or something. I don't understand their bond, but I know that it's there. Come on, I'll even let you have a beer. I perk up. One beer, he corrects with a stern look. I laugh and agree. Okay, fine, but tomorrow cook your daughter dinner. Dad made me change my shirt, which was a tight crop top before, to something more suitable. It wasn't that he controlled what I wore, but more so that he knew some of the guys that hung out at the bar weren't that great. He had good men in the club, but the ones who weren't, he couldn't control. The bar was like the town's hangout spot. People who wanted some danger and excitement, wanted to be part of the club, who thought it was cool or whatever, they flocked there. When I was younger, he only let me come in the daytime. I guess now it doesn't matter much. I was raised well, after all. You want me to drive the truck or you want to get on the bike? Dad grins, and we walk out into the garage and onto the driveway. I guess the bike might as well come back for real. I smile. I like the bike. Mom hates it when I ride on it, but she, in so many words, told me that was what attracted her to Dad in the first place, and that's usually when I stopped listening. But for me, it was how Dad and I bonded. I'm the only thing in the world he loves more than his bikes and, and the club. Right on. Helmet, of course. He grabs it from the hook on the wall, and I groan. It's still my pink motorcycle helmet I've always had. Somehow, I forget it each time. Dad, I have to get a new helmet. I strap it on and climb on after him. He revs the engine, even does the swirly thing I liked as a kid. Well, I still like it. I laugh all the way to the club, realizing how much I miss my dad. The parking lot is full. Chrome on bikes glint in the darkness and people are milling about. I can hear the music inside pumping from here. It's crazy. I walk in with Dad and I see some familiar faces as they wave to me. Only Jack and Al actually greet Dad, though, and hug me. Al is tall and wide like Dad is. His dark hair is long and so is his beard. He looks scary, but he's just a teddy bear. I would know since that's all he would get me for my birthday. Jack is a little leaner, has a bald head and clean-shaven face. Tattoos up to his neck. He actually is scary, but not to me. Dad has a lot of tattoos, too, but none of them are visible under his clothes. I got you a graduation present, too. Jeff, Jack half hugs me, and I laugh at him. That was like six months ago. Well, you didn't come down, and you know I can't leave the state. His voice is rough from smoking cigarettes all the time. When he had a cancer scare a few years ago, he dialed it back, though. Chews on gum all the time to help. Yeah, yeah. I wave at Dad, still talking to Al. Jack shows me to one of the back rooms and shows me my gifts, which is a leather jacket just like the guys at the club wear, except it was all girled up with rhinestones on the back around the logo. I love it. Thank you. I hug him, and then he has to leave. Something about pool. I wasn't really listening. I set the jacket down in Dad's office and look around. I spent a lot of time here when I was younger, under the desk mostly because I was always sneaking in. He has this photo of the three of us together on his desk. We were at the beach one of the few times we went on vacation, and I'm at least eight in the picture. It makes me sad to see it. They both hold on to each other, but we can't make it work. I don't understand. I figure I should take Dad up on that offer for a beer and head out. I go down the back hall so I don't run into anyone else. People see me around and they kind of treat me like an outcast because they're afraid of my dad. I was never Janine around here, just Tank's daughter. Or even worse, the president's daughter. A noise in the supply closet made me pay attention. The door was half open and a guy I didn't recognize was in there. I knew everyone in the club, really. This young guy with only half a tattoo sleeve and shaggy hair wasn't one of them. Are you stealing? I frown, hardening my voice. He stands up, almost hitting his head from shock. He turns, and I get sidetracked from him. He's tall. His shoulders are wide and broad, and his brown hair is light, long enough to go past his ear. The spaces around his eyes are soft, as are his brows, and they're light. 
I can't really tell under the dim light of the closet, but they are distracting. Most of him is distracting. He has the rugged schoolboy thing down. He must be no younger than me. Dad mentioned a new prospect, and this must be him, because I haven't ever seen him around, and I was just here last year. I swallowed back my nerves and tried to stand my ground. He narrows his eyes at me and licks his lips. Uh, no? His voice is deeper than I thought it would be. It hits my skin like a wave. It rolls down over me, and I wish I'd never said anything at all. I cross my arms and stare back at him. I kind of wished I'd changed into something else after the second outfit Dad didn't want to argue with me. But it's the kind of shirt that moves when I do, and I feel my navel exposed when I do. His eyes drift there, and I knew Dad was right, but that's not what gets me. It's the fact that they drifted at all. Boys didn't look at me at all. Well, men don't. But this one has barely looked at my face in the time I've been standing here. Plus, he's very hot. In, like, a cute way. I shake my head and try not to say something I shouldn't. I work here, if that's any of your business. He chuckles. The sound echoes off the small space. I shift on my feet. The Doc Martens I'm wearing squeak in the silence. The rest of the club is cordoned off, so the music is mute to us here. It is. I swallow when he moves and walks closer. Not a lot. Just enough that I have time to let my nerves find my voice. I take him in again, from head to toe and back again. When I reach his eyes, I hope he hadn't noticed, but he has this small smirk that tells me he might have. He has that natural, permanent smile thing going on, though. Well, I've never seen you around here before, he adds. I find my voice again. I shrug my shoulders and tighten my fists. It helps with the urge to touch him. I've never had that before, the urge to reach out and touch someone, just to see what it's like. But he is doing that, this stranger. He looks at me again, and I wonder if he feels the same way. The sound of the door shutting makes me blink in surprise and then focus back on him. I haven't seen you around here either. I raise my brow and purse my lips at him. It gives me the illusion that I have control over this. But I know that I don't. Well, I guess it goes both ways then. I gotta get back to work. He smirks at me, sending a chill up my back, and then heads off to the rest of the club. I stare after him in a bit of shock. I mean, it seems weird that even just happened, but it did. Now I want to figure out who he is without drawing attention to it. That wouldn't be good for anyone. I should just keep my head down and enjoy my time visiting Dad. But when I go out into the club, I'm already looking for him. This is going to be bad. Chapter 3 Sparrow I didn't know he had a daughter, I lie. I heard of the elusive daughter that no one was allowed to talk to, the guys that lost their heads over, or close to it. Well, he does... And she is off limits, Logan laughs at me. Yeah, I get it. Just wondering. I only just joined the club. I don't need some drama over a chick getting me kicked out. I don't have kids, but I know Tank, and he is protective over the guys at the club. I can't imagine what he would be like over his actual daughter. Yeah, well, I'm glad I warned you. We keep tending bar to new guys coming in. There's a rush, then it dies back down. People are playing pool and darts, and I'm still watching Tank's daughter out of the corner of my eye when I think no one is watching. She's talking to some of the older guys. Tank appears, and I get a strike of fear in me when he does. Now I know why her little scowl looked so familiar. The bar area clears out, and I start cleaning up, picking up stray cash and such. I have to restock beers and liquor bottles, make sure nothing is out of place. I'm good at this stuff because it's simple. Foolproof work is my kind of thing. Roland keeps mentioning club business to me as if I'm going to get involved in actual complicated half-illegal shit. No thanks. I'll take my easy ride back to a normal life as long as I can. There's some stray beer bottles by the pool table. I gotta get out there, Logan says. Yeah, I nod. Yeah, no problem. See you. 
We shake goodbye and then he's off. I usually get left behind to do the rest of the work. Rookie type stuff, but I don't mind. Roland is somewhere in here. I don't know where. I head off to start cleaning. A girl's laughter catches my attention. I turn to see her again, talking to Jack. He leaves, and then it's just her at the end of the bar. Some guys by the darts on the other end, and me. I have no idea where everyone else is, but I'm not going to figure it out. I'm bent over the pool table, picking up beer bottles, when I'm surprised and almost hit my head again. So you do work here? I carefully stand and turn. Yeah, I do. I toss the bottles in the garbage, glancing over her. She has this way about her. I can't place it yet, but she is cute. The long curly hair and smooth tanned skin does it. Full lips and a small round face, too. She has a nice body, but I really shouldn't get into that. Word has it you're pretty important around here, I grin, combing my hair back with my hand. Oh. She frowns a bit, and if she looked nervous before, she definitely looks it now. It makes sense, then, why she seemed glad that I hadn't known her. Forget I said anything. I hold up my hands in defense. I walk closer. She inhales, and her throat tightens. But I stop at the end of the pool table and lean against it. Thanks. So you're the new prospect everyone is talking about. She grabs a stool and sits on it. I guess I am. I hope they aren't talking about me, though, I chuckle. She shakes her head and shrugs. I mean, it's mostly good, but I won't take their word for it, she giggles. I smile at her, liking how easy it is to talk to her. I don't usually have that anymore, or ever. Not with women, at least. I wasn't good at it in school. I didn't make friends. I don't know why I feel like I can be friends with her, if not more. Because up close, she is damned sexy. Fair enough. Did you just come into town today? I ask. Yeah, I did. From? Um, Austin. My mom and I live out there. I didn't even know Tank was married, I laugh. She smiles. Yeah, I guess he doesn't really talk about it. They're married, but obviously they don't live together. I visit my dad over the summers. Oh, okay, so you're in school then, I ask. I figured she was at least over high school age, but after I turned 21, I stopped counting age because I wasn't in school. Um, not really, I guess. <laughs> what? I laugh. She giggles. Tucks loose hair behind her ear and bites her lip. I graduated high school and then didn't know what I wanted to do, but I go to college in the fall, she explains. Gotcha. School isn't my thing, clearly, since I'm slumming it here. I shrug, and she laughs. Eh, the club isn't bad. Well, you would know, since you're in it. I nod. Eh, not by choice. My big brother thinks he can save me, but really, he thinks he can just babysit me, I joke. Well, I don't have siblings, so I guess I don't know how that goes. She uncrosses her arms for the first time, and my eyes drop to her chest. I swallow back my reaction to her full breasts, fighting the material of her shirt. I force my eyes back to hers and clear my throat. <clears throat> You're lucky in that regard. So how long are you staying? A few months. Nice. I've only been in the club for a few months now, so I don't really know what the other guys mean when they talked about you before. I guess I figured I would never meet you. That would have been easier, she half smiles. I tilt my head at her and take another step closer. It gets me in the right place. Once I breathe in, her scent wafts up. Definitely better than what I smell around here. It's a sweet smell, like... Something edible. Why? I mean, what does everyone keep talking about? I know Tank, maybe not all that well, but he seems like a reasonable guy. She stands up and faces me. Her eyes widen as she looks up at me. She takes a breath and then tilts her head up at me. I was about 17 when a guy hit on me right here in this bar. I told my dad and he threw him out, literally, on his ass. <laughs> I chuckle. Tattletale? She grins, her lips curling in before it's a full smile. I guess that's fair. I nod. Mm-hmm. 
What's your name, anyway? She opens her mouth to answer, but is cut off by glass breaking in the background. I turn to see what it is, but it's just two of the club guys around the dartboard. Not my problem. She sighs, and I look back at her. It's Janine. I smile and hold out my hand. Spencer. She shakes my hand. Hers is soft and feels like it doesn't belong in mine. But there it is. You don't have a weird club name yet? I release her and laugh. Nope, I'm just a regular guy. She smiles. Her dad comes out of the back door. And even I take a step back. Roland will never let me hear the end of it if I fuck this up for a girl. Even one as pretty and nice as Janine. Somehow I doubt that. I watch her walk off in the direction of her dad. I see him a little less as Tank in that moment. But then he looks over his shoulder at me as they leave. And I realize I am already on his hit list. Chapter 4. Janine What was that? What was what? Janie. Dad warns with his hard stare. He towers over me, and it used to be quite intimidating as a kid. But I'm the only one in the world that knows his big, scary demeanor is just for show. Dad, please, let's just go home, I said. But I could still feel him scowling over at the new guy, Spencer. I didn't want to get him into trouble, and I already had a bad track record of doing that to guys at the club. Well, at least the last one was warranted because he was an ass. But Spencer didn't seem like that. In fact, it was hard not to look over my shoulder when we were leaving. Fine. Did you have fun? He asked. We walked out into the chilly night air and he handed me my new jacket. I had left it in his office when I went off to snoop. I was glad for it now. I put it on and it was warm and insulated. No wonder the guys loved wearing them. Uh, sure. I'm kind of hungry, though. Dad grinned at me and handed me my helmet. I figured you were. We stopped at the diner we'd been going to since I was a kid. It was open all night, so I could get breakfast any time I wanted, which was really just chicken and waffles with a shake. Dad had a steak and fries combo, like he always did, too. I would be afraid he'd get high blood pressure or something, but he is healthy as a horse. He asked me about what I'd been doing, stuff with Mom he pretended not to care about. It was the same old thing. Why do you do that? I sipped my milkshake and stole a fry from his plate to dip it in. He scowled, intending not to answer me. But he always started off that way. There were only a few other people in the diner, some of which were subtly staring. But then a 6'5 dude and an MC cut a few feet from them. They always stared. I nudged him. Dad? I even used my whiny voice that irritated him. That's grown-up stuff, sweetie. I frowned. You're my parents. It's different when I see photos of you around both your houses and you act like you don't care. But you do. I mean, wasn't I enough? I leaned back in the chair, taking a deep breath. I don't know why I said it, what's been on my mind for such a long time. Perhaps because it's so late... Or because I'm just older and don't hold my tongue anymore. Either way, it made him actually look sad instead of indifferent for a change. That's not why, Jeannie. Your mom doesn't like what I do. I'm not going to stop doing it. You see the problem. He followed me in dipping a fry in my milkshake, and I smiled. Yeah, I see the problem. Do people like you not retire? He laughed. <laughs> not really. After I had a berry cobbler for dessert, I was officially full enough to go home, where I knew his fridge was probably half empty. I went up to my room, liking how it looked more my age now. I showered and wore my fleece to bed, but I couldn't get my mind to calm down, no matter how tired I am. I keep thinking about Spencer. I've been going to that club for years, so seeing him was a shock, and it's probably why I got so intrigued. Besides him being hot, for me, some guys were cute or handsome. I never found them sexy. It wasn't my thing. But Spencer was hot, that's for sure. Knowing he was new to the club made it worse because more tattoos and suntans from riding for hours would only make that worse. I liked coming here, but now I almost didn't want to leave just so I could get to know him better. 
When I gave up on sleep for a while, I checked my messages to reply to my mom, not expecting her to reply so fast. I almost wanted to tell her I asked Dad about them, but she's a lot more sensitive about it, which I understand. But it's hard to be caught in the middle of a fight that isn't even happening. My eyes started to droop, and I let myself fall asleep, knowing I would definitely be dreaming about a certain new person in my life. You should go out with him. Are you crazy? I stare at Adriana with a crazed look, and she just laughs in response. Adriana is probably the only reason I am a regular person, somewhat. We've been friends since junior high, when I lived here in town, and stayed friends even when I moved. She stuck around here for school and is now a teacher. It's absolutely crazy how someone who parties on the weekends teaches tomorrow's youth during the week, but she does it well. Her third graders love her, and the school is so small, almost everyone in town went there. We both did. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I am also right. She dips a piece of bread in her soup. I let the chatter from the large group of people in the cafe play out behind me as I try and figure out what to say. I told her about meeting Spencer, of course, and she's been talking my ear off about it ever since. I kind of wish I hadn't said anything, but I would have given myself an ulcer from overthinking it. I've only been at my dad's for a few days, and I haven't been back at the club, so yeah, I've been slowly going out of my mind. I just met him, and he probably doesn't even like me that way. Everyone at the club is under the impression that I'm off limits. I pop a fry in my mouth, barely tasting the salt. Adriana laughs. You are kind of off limits, but that makes it more exciting. She nudges me under the table, and I nudge her back. Her finely tweezed brows tighten as she gives me a funny look. She has a simple look to her, but it's not simple the way I am. Her brunette hair is shiny and wavy, her green eyes always bright, and if she weren't a teacher, I'm pretty sure she could be a model. I don't need exciting. I need to have actual experience before I go off to college and turn 21. I don't want that to include the sudden disappearance of a man or getting someone killed. I shiver at the thought. My dad isn't a violent criminal, but he does criminal things. There's a difference, but also a fine line. That's all it could be, a summer fling. I wouldn't have gotten through high school without them, honestly. She waves her hand. Adriana has always been a fan of travel, and so have her parents. They went all kinds of places, sometimes leaving her unattended to do whatever she wanted. I don't want a fling, nor do I want the trouble of getting involved with an MC member, I reasoned. She responded with a scowl and shook her head at me. What? I pried from her. She giggled. Nothing. I just thought you would be more adventurous by now. She shrugs, trying to make me feel bad. I release a breath and try to ignore her, but it keeps sounding like a good idea the longer I think about it. Even if I agreed to, I have no idea how to initiate things with a guy. Not one that looked like Spencer, at least. All my experience lied with high school group dates and one very weird prom date, who I think is an MIT nerd now, so I wasn't about to sell myself short. You can't guilt me into this, Anna. We finish eating, talking about her work at school and my dad. I filled her in on what's happening with them. She's the only one who can really calm my mind about it. I've gotten to an age where it's hard to ignore it, but also hard to confront it. When are you going to the club again? She asks me as we leave. It's the summertime, so she doesn't have to work regularly, but sometimes has staff planning meetings and such. I don't know. Whenever my dad drags me there again, I laugh once. We stop by the door of my car. She's taller than me and looks down with an amused look. No way! I laugh aloud. Come on, live a little, or a lot more. She hugs me sideways, and I wiggle away from her. Nope. I'll see you tomorrow? I ask. She nods. Yeah, I'll try again then. I shake my head at her because she's relentless. We hug goodbye, and then I'm off to stop at the grocery store, and then to get shirts from the shop. 
It's been around for a few years. Dad thinks I don't know, but they needed another way to hide money they got from their less than conventional ideas. I still like the shirts, though. I parked out front and didn't see anyone at the register from through the window, so I hoped my dad wouldn't eventually ask me to work some shifts like he always did. I saved money babysitting during the year at Mom's place, so I was always fine on that, especially since Dad sent money every month, too. I only did it to help, but it was still a drag. After scouting the rack for a few minutes, I picked out a few options. Are you following me now? I froze. The newly familiar, soft yet deep voice came from behind me, and I nearly dropped the shirts on the floor. I closed my eyes, swallowing heavily as I turned. Spencer stood behind me, smiling as he leaned his arm over the rack. He was in one of the shirts, a gray color that was tight on his arms and chest. He looks a lot more muscled than I remembered. My eyes went from his faded jeans, fitting him in all the right places, to his smirking face. I suddenly felt even more subpar than normal in my leggings and oversized high school jersey. I played soccer and kept all the shirts. I realized that he had said something, and I'm just standing here staring. I, um, I've been around this place longer than you have, actually. I clear my throat and try to stand my ground, which just includes holding the shirts in front of me for protection. From what? I have no idea. Fair enough. Nice. He gestures to my chest. Excuse me? I screw up my face. He pauses, licks his lips, and then smiles. Your shirts? He chuckles once. I widen my eyes and inhale sharply. Oh, thanks. I don't know why I thought he was referring to something else, but judging from the way he's acting, I think he did mean it to come off like that. You work here every day? I ask him, taking a step closer. It moves the air around me, and I feel less like I'm being suffocated. Pretty much. It's what no one else wants to do, so as the new guy, I guess I have to do it. He grins. They won't run you around for long, I assure him. I've been around the club long enough to know that they only put up a front most of the time. I'll take your word for it, then. He stares back at me, and we kind of stand there, silently, until the awkwardness takes over. I'll, uh, ring you up. As we walk over to the register, I keep thinking of what Adriana told me. It could just be a fun fling, and it doesn't have to be anything that the whole world knows about. I'm a little pissed at her for planting the seed, because now it's really growing. So, uh, what do you do when you're, um, not here, or at the club? I stutter, avoiding his gaze. He stops scanning the shirt and gives me a funny look. Not much. His half-smile plays across his face, and my stomach flips. I swallow, trying to figure out what to say next. I wait until he is halfway through folding the shirts before I have the courage again. Do you want to um, hang out sometime? My vocabulary has taken a dive as I blurt it all out at once. He drops the shirt onto the table, heat passing between us as his dark eyes bore into mine. A shiver goes down my neck, along with a cold sweat that passes through my fingers, splayed across the countertop. They feel so clammy they could slip off, and I feel my heart in my throat even more as time goes on. Like to hook up, or as friends? I choke. <laughs> what? No, I mean, no, uh, I don't know, I stutter. He laughs audibly, stuffing my shirts in a bag. I'm just messing with you. Sure, we can hang out. He reaches behind him and takes out his phone. I hand him my card to pay in turn. You have to pay for this? He chuckles. I add my number in his phone and spell my own name wrong, starting again. Um, yeah, my dad is, is all about fairness. I hand his phone back and watch him flinch. It's short, but I see it. Thanks. I'll see you later? I almost phrase it as a question. He nods, smiling, but it doesn't reach his eyes. Yep. 
I walk off, getting in my car and driving home. It isn't until I get there that I notice the shift in his demeanor, as soon as I mention my dad. Crap. Chapter 5. Spencer I'm staring down a beer bottle when Roland comes up in front of the bar. You couldn't last six months? He barks, leaning over the bar. I frown at him and say nothing for a while. He calms down and sits on the bar stool. I laugh at him and start wiping it down. So, what are we talking about? I ask him. He scratches at his stubble, a permanent two-day shadow he's set on hanging on to for the rest of his life. Everyone heard about you talking to the Prez's daughter. I laugh aloud. What the fuck, man? Seriously. I forgot this was a cult, I murmur. It happened maybe 20 minutes ago before she was practically forced out by her father. It's not... Look, I just want to make sure you aren't doing anything crazy. I stop what I'm doing and face him, leaning my hands on the counter. I'm a sane person, bro. Besides, she isn't even my type. I wave him off, and we leave soon after. I get the hang of riding my new bike, but once I'm inside, all that is the last thing on my mind. Janine is my type, if I ever had one. I'm not a choosy person, but if I could come up with something perfect, it would probably be her. She was cute, not so unattainable. I've seen hotter chicks in my life, but the point was that she wasn't like that at all. Not like the women who hung around the club. Not like anyone I've ever gone after. So, of course, she is the one person I'm not allowed to think about. After a shower, I was beat after a long day and went straight to bed. But not without thinking about Janine first. Want to come to the gym with me? Are you going to force me to spot you the whole time? I glance at Roland, standing in my doorway. I sit up from the bed where I was doing a crossword. It calms my brain sometimes, and he laughs at me. Just because you can't lift as much as me doesn't mean that you need to be salty about it. He crosses his arms, trying to taunt me. A little friendly competition is the only reason we don't chew each other's heads off. Fine, but I have to be at the shop later. I get up. He nods. Meet you outside. I get dressed and then meet him by the garage. We take my truck since it's easier that way. The ride is silent and I get the feeling he has a lecture in mind for me. He waits until after we lift and are on the treadmill before he says anything. Tank spoke to me about a possible assignment for you. Assignment? Is this black ops? I laugh, going in an easy jog. I stare forward at the row of treadmills in front of us. The girls jogging at the last two who are wearing mini shorts, but don't really catch my eye. I'm serious. If he wants you to play a bigger role in the club, that's a good thing. I shake my head. I didn't come here for that. I told you. We agreed you wouldn't bug me about it. Yeah, but... Fuck this. I stop the machine and storm off towards the locker room. I grab my bag and storm out of the whole gym, too. Unfortunately, I have to wait for him in the truck, too, and he sure did finish his workout before appearing. At least he gave me time to fume and remind myself that he only pestered me about shit because he cared. But I don't want to be under the Prez's wing. I just want to cruise by and do my shit so I can keep myself busy and not get into bad shit again. Not go on assignments and shit like that. Sorry for caring about you. Roland mutters. I pull out of the parking space and scoff. Sorry that you do, I respond, still a bit pissed. We get to the house and go our separate ways without saying a word. I make it to the blender before him and use the last of the protein powder just to spite him, because I don't buy it. Then I go to my room, shower, and hide out until I have to leave for the shop. I'm not opposed to working there. It's quiet and no one really bothers me. The customers don't want to be bothered either, which makes sense because the shirt designs are kind of emo. The time alone forces me to think about Janine. Not so much forced, as I just let myself do it. It's easy to do. She was witty, maybe a little shy. I haven't figured if that's just how she is yet, but either way, I like it. 
I hadn't had an honest conversation with anyone in a while. I don't really have them anymore, actually. I surrounded myself with people that are bad for me until now. I guess guys at the MC can go both ways, but they have each other's back. They have loyalty. Now that I am part of that, I don't really want to mess it up. I also don't want to find out if Tank's rumors that precede him are true. You're late. Darius is coming out of the shop when I walk in. We don't really talk that much, unless I see him by accident. Fuck off, I'm early. We shake on the way past each other. I turn and watch him get on his bike with a girl I saw in the parking lot but doubted she was with him. She's tall, leggy, exactly his type. It's the only kind of woman I see him with. There isn't anyone in the shop when I get there, so I just start my normal time-passing duties of counting inventory, folding shirts in the back, and listening to music. I wouldn't hear anyone come in unless they shouted for me when they were ready to pay, which they usually do. Also, there's a bell, but it's a self-starting job. I mose around in there for a while before I resurface. No one has come in for hours. That's why I almost jump over myself when I hear footsteps on the other side of me. I make a face, but don't bother to investigate it. I pass through the racks, stopping when I see a familiar head of brown, curly hair. I think there is no way that she is here, but I could spot that curly head anywhere. The way it flows down her back, all coiled up, bouncing any time she moves. I'd like to see it bounce in other ways, but that's beside the point. I don't know how long I stand there, staring at her, looking at how her leggings fit, or the way her shirt falls over her slight shoulders and clings to her ass. The dull green color gets vibrant around her. Are you following me around now? I lean on the rack like I'm putting myself on display, and she stands there for a good ten seconds before she even turns around, like she knew my voice but couldn't believe I was talking to her or something. I, um, I've been around this place longer than you have, actually. She clears her throat. Her voice is as soft and sweet as I remember. Fair enough. Nice. I look at the shirts she's holding around her middle, my eyes catching the way her shirt creases between her breasts. Even I get confused as to what I was talking about. Excuse me? Her voice tightens. I pause to answer her and smile. Your shirts... I laugh. She widens her eyes in understanding. Oh, thanks. You work here every day? She asks me and takes a step closer. I lick my lips at getting a whiff of her light perfume scent. Pretty much. It's what no one else wants to do, so as the new guy, I guess I have to do it. I admit. They won't run you around for long, she says with certainty, as if she knows. I'll take your word for it, then, I reply kind of just standing there until I can stop tripping over my own words. It's not so much that I don't know what to say, but that I don't want to say the wrong thing. Something about her tells me my usual pickup lines won't work, and I don't want them to either. <clears throat> I'll, uh, ring you up. I clear my throat, finally moving things along. I start ringing up her shirts, again wondering why anyone would spend 20 bucks on one shirt, let alone four of each but it seems to have been working. So, what do you do when you're, um, not here or at the club? Janine asks, tripping over her words. I glance at the way her blush starts on the ends of her cheeks, by her ears, and fades out closer to her rounded nose. Not much, I respond with a smile. I go back to scanning, and she seems like she's going to say something else, and I just wait for it. Do you want to um, hang out sometime? I can hear her breathing hitch after she asks. I drop the shirt on the table in shock, more that I wasn't expecting her to ask me that. I forget who she is, and I look at her with a new view, one that agrees I want to spend time with her. Ugh, like to hook up or as friends? I joke. A what? No, I mean, no, uh, I don't know. She spasses out again, and I try not to laugh. I laugh and start bagging her clothes. I'm just messing with you. Sure, we can hang out. I take out my phone and give it to her at the same time she gives me her card. It's one of those really thick ones, and I wonder where the hell she got it from. You have to pay for this? I laugh. I watch her type and erase about three times. 
Um, yeah, my dad is all about fairness. She gives my phone back, and I try not to let my fingers brush hers. At the same time, I feel my heart sink. Damn, for about three minutes there, I forgot we weren't regular people. I fucking hated grade school, but I do remember Romeo and Juliet. The thought of her dad finding out makes my blood run cold, and I haven't even seen him in action when he's actually pissed. Nor do I want to. Thanks. I'll see you later. Her sweet voice cuts through my thoughts, and I feel like shit, because I know I can't ever hang out with her. Not in any kind of way. Yep. I nod and force a smile at her. Her gaze lingers a bit before she walks out, and I watch her go. I lean over the counter and groan to myself when she's gone. I stare at her contact in my phone and try to force myself to delete it, to remove the temptation, but I can't. I like her. She is on my mind, and there is something about her that keeps her there. I don't want it to go away, even though I'm torn up about it. I have the clearest mind I've had in a long time. I just wish it wasn't so fucking complicated. Chapter 6 Janine I hate that I've become this person. It only took Spencer ten days to completely uproot my life, because all I have been doing is thinking about how he hasn't called. I gave him my number a week ago when I saw him in the shop, and nothing. It's good I don't have his number, otherwise I might have put him on blast. Adriana only tells me that's how boys are and that he'll come to his senses, but we both know what is really going on. Spencer is afraid of my dad, like all the others are. Well, there are no others, but how the hell would I know? No one at the club or in the town who knows who he is would come anywhere near me. I busied myself with looking at campus videos, getting excited about college, but it was kind of hard to do that when I felt I was walking in with little experience. Life, boys, parties, and such, it's an integral part of college that I want to experience, but I don't want it to overtake my life. I was supposed to spend this summer discovering myself, having fun. Now I'm just pining over a boy in my room all day. Dad doesn't really bother me much. We have dinner together, and he sort of tells me about his day, and I do the same with mine. We get along, but we both aren't very talkative people. I don't ask him about Mom anymore, which is kind of hard to do when it's the other thing that occupies my thoughts. I am standing in the kitchen, finishing up dinner for my dad and I, when I hear voices coming from his office. I didn't even know he was home but I doubt that it's an intruder or something. Dad? I call out, still holding the spoon I used to stir the sauce. Maybe it is an intruder. I round the corner and see him talking to another guy. He's younger, tall, and muscled with dark hair. I'm sure he has tattoos, too, but I can't tell since he is in his cut. Hey, Janine, I'll be in soon. Why are you walking around with a spoon? Eating out of the tomato jar again? Dad snickers. He's leaning against his desk, and the other guy standing in front of him turns and faces me. He's hot as sin, and I blush just as hot, too. Dad, ugh. I whine and shut the door behind me. I don't think people give him enough credit for being such a mastermind, embarrassing me in front of almost every man alive. It's like he wants me celibate and doesn't want grandchildren. I finish dinner, setting out the food before I hear heavy footfalls behind me. I don't even turn around as the front door opens and closes. I wait until Dad is in the kitchen before I confront him. I haven't eaten out of a jar since I was like eight. I cross my arms and stare him down. He just laughs at me and wraps me up in a hug. Okay, sweetie. He rubs my back and I grab at his t-shirt. Yeah, fine. I made chicken parm. I take my plate and sit down. He follows after getting a beer and a glass of whiskey. I'll make dinner tomorrow, he smiles. I stare across the table at him and smile. I'm hungrier than I thought, but my stomach has been in knots for so long that I just find it hard to eat regularly. Who was the guy you embarrassed me in front of? I ask casually. 
He laughs again and shakes his head, talking with his mouth full like he always does. My vice president, I thought you met him. Oh, I didn't really see his face. I was too busy blushing and wishing I wasn't there at all. Were you talking about club business, secretly in your office? I giggle. Sort of, but don't make it sound so illegal. I wasn't. I sigh and lean back in my chair, away from my plate. Did you do that when you and Mom were together? Maybe she didn't like how it seemed like it was illegal business. Dad frowns and pushes his plate away, too, sighing. Jeannie, I told you. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I take our plates and stand. I'll do the dishes. He meets me at the sink, but I still dry them off as he washes them. I, uh, need a favor, Jeannie. Dad stops washing and turns to me. I groan and look up at him. Like what? He chuckles. That secret business was about the shop. Darius usually watches it sometimes, but he's not all that into it anymore. He's also busy with other things. Oh my God, Dad, are you asking me? I'll pay you extra. I know you wanted to come and relax, but it would be nice to help your old man out. He smiles, that dad-like teddy bear smile that made me not get my driver's license until I was 17. But Dad, the only thing I'm thinking about is having to see Spencer, some guy who ghosted me. I'm not exactly keen on seeing him anytime soon. Oh, please, I gotta beg. I shake my head and somehow nod at the same time. Damn, he really got me. Fine, I'll help. I had less than a day to psych myself up about seeing Spencer. The only way I could actually leave the house was to tell myself that I might not even see him, that he had a different shift or something. But I still wore the best pair of jeans I own, and I couldn't really dress up to go to a shirt shop, so I just wore one of the shirts I bought the other day. I actually put something in my hair, though, taming the curls a bit. I texted Adriana all night, needing her to help calm me down. She always knew how to reason with me, even if some of the stuff she said was crazy. This was all her fault anyway, telling me to ask Spencer out in the first place. I know I didn't have to do it, but she still planted the seed, and it all came down to just acting like nothing even happened. Because nothing did. Good morning, Dad. I find him in his office, hiding like he usually is in the mornings. Hey, Jeannie. You headed out? To slum it up in a t-shirt shop, yes. I sit on the big leather armchair he has. He's behind his desk, still in his pajamas, drinking coffee and doing something on his laptop. What are you doing? I ask. Getting a new grill. I laugh. You need a new grill? He shakes his head. Not for me, for the club. Oh. I look around in my purse to check I have everything. It's an ugly brown satchel thing. I've had it for years. I'm sure I can find a movie stub from high school in here. You should eat before you leave. Is it that hard of work? I chide. He gives me a funny look from over the computer. You know, you're easily tired, Janine. I roll my eyes. Yeah, when I was like 12, I gotta go. I don't want to be late and get in trouble with the boss man. All right, all right. He waves me off. I laugh, rising to hug him goodbye. I kiss his cheek over the beard so he'll be in a good mood. And then I go. Without coffee, too. I hadn't realized my stomach was in such knots. Spencer is just a boy, and I keep trying to tell myself that, but it doesn't really work. He makes me nervous, plain and simple. I almost take the wrong turn, and I don't even pay attention to my favorite song on the radio. I pull up in front of the shop around noon, just before it opens. There are no cars parked out front, but I do see a bike closer to the end of the lot. All that's around the shop is a dollar store and ATM. The town doesn't have much life to it. I text Adriana that I arrived and hope she has a last few words of hope. Adriana, try not to look directly in his eyes. Me, thanks for the help. I take a deep breath and try to see in through the window, but the graphic designs on it make that hard. Adriana, 
Oh, Janine, relax. Me. That's a little better. Talk to you later. I lock my phone, stuff it in my purse, and get out of the car, all in one breath. Crossing the front door, I inhale sharply and take in the mainstream air condition and shop smell. I've only watched the shop a few times before. Last summer was fine because I was by myself and I hadn't met Spencer yet. Now I take cautious steps as if I don't know where I am until I get to the back room where I put my stuff. If I keep my phone with me, I will just end up watching YouTube videos on it all day instead of actually working. I may not want to do this, but my dad asked me to, so it's hard not to do a good job. I also tend to have a type A personality. There are only so many things I can do, so I start with folding the shirts in the back to restock. The back room isn't a bad place to hang out, but I can't see anyone from in there. I decide to fold them at the register, where I can see, but I stop in my tracks when I see who just walked in. Janine, hi, what are you doing here? Spencer takes off a pair of black sunglasses, his eyes boring right into mine and not letting go. I gulp, my fingers threatening to slip off the box. I force myself to walk forward when it starts getting too heavy. Working, I murmur back. He stands where he is, staring at me. I feel like I'm on display as my heartbeat calms down. Why? He laughs once. I frown at him before looking away. I take the box cutter in my hand and slice open the box. Eventually he gets the point and walks off to I don't know where. I am supposed to be acting like nothing happened, so I don't think indulging in conversation with him will do that. We're both here because of the club. It's not what I had in mind about hanging out. I don't even know what I was thinking anymore. A guy who says he'll text or call and doesn't shouldn't be one that I'm crushing over. But here we are. I think I owe you an apology. His voice comes out of nowhere to the right of me, and I jump and clutch my fingers over my chest as I scowl at him. When I gather myself again, I drop the shirt I was folding and turn to face him. I cross my arms and regard him carefully. He's wearing a purplish graphic tee that hangs around his muscles, perfect faded jeans, and his hair has that artful mess to it that it always does. You think? I chew the inside of my cheek as I wait. He clears his throat, nodding as he steps closer. He stops by the wall behind the register, jewel pods and cigarettes for sale, and leans against it. His hands get stuffed in his pockets, and I tear my eyes away from the veins following down his dark-haired arms. I, um, I just don't want to complicate your life. I tend to do that to people. I roll my eyes. Oh, please. I really wish you would spare me the it's me, not you line. He grins. <laughs> it's not a line. It's the truth. I shake my head and sigh. Whatever, Spencer. I just want to help my dad out here at the shop and then leave when my summer is up. Can you try not to complicate that? My throat tightens, and I swallow it down. His expression passes with pain, but I don't let myself get affected by that. I had to say it, and he doesn't necessarily need to know how much he has hurt me. Yeah, sure. He straightens up, taking his hands out of his pockets and walking off. I release a deep breath and go back to folding shirts. I do that for hours, keeping my mind as busy as possible. I won't forget the look on his face when I said that, but I know that I need to. I have a tendency even worse than him, which is to apologize even when I don't need to. But at least he apologized. I stop myself from going down that train of thought, and it's helped by a customer walking in. It ends up being two girls, at least eighteen, dressed in crop tops and jeans. I frown at them on instinct. They already seem like the kind of girls I hated in high school. I take the empty box to the back to avoid them. Surely they can find their way around. When I come back, they are heavily chatting up Spencer, or trying to. They are by the register, leaning over the table. Spencer is scanning their stuff. I don't know why I get that ugly pang of jealousy in the pit of my stomach, but I do, and it sucks. He isn't even remotely mine. I shouldn't feel like this at all. 
In all my time staring at him, he glances up for the first time, his smile dropping, and I quickly look away. I find something else to do, which just ends up being sitting in the back room to pretend to look at inventory sheets, math, stuff that I'm not really good at. It only takes a few moments before my eyes start stinging. This really sucks. I don't even know him, but I'm already hurt by being ignored by him. It doesn't make sense. A knock at the door forces me from my thoughts. Hey, Spencer announces himself in that sappy, deep voice of his. I don't mean it in a bad way. His voice is just soft and even as it is deep. Hi. I lay my hands across the papers, wringing them together like it will take out my nerves. Can I sit? He gestures to the spare desk chair. I sigh. Don't you have a conversation to get back to? I snipe. He chuckles, sitting anyway. Are you jealous of the groupies? His grin is too infectious to not smile back. The groupies? I make a face. He licks his lips and nods. Yeah, you know, they hang out around the club and here sometimes. Oh, I guess I'm not here often enough to know that. I am sorry, Janine, about not calling. His expression turns serious and I lose myself in the sincerity of his eyes. That's how I know. I learned that from my dad, looking people right in the eye to try and read them. I never thought I was good at it until now. The uneasy feeling in my chest leaves when I look at him, and it turns into something else. Why didn't you? I mean, is there a good reason, or are you just sorry? Now I'm just giving him a hard time, but I still want to know. He licks his lips and leans forward, making a table of his knees and resting his elbows on them. It was because of your dad, which I know sounds shitty, but you have to understand that this club was like my thousandth chance, and I can't fuck things up because then my brother will kill me. He laughs it off, and I stare at him for a good while before I get what he is saying. Who is your brother? He frowns. That's what you got out of that? He shakes his head. My brother is the vice president, Roland. I giggle realizing why it felt so weird when I saw him last night. They look more alike now that I know. That's not all I got out of that. I'm sorry that my father scares you. I mock him. He scoffs. He doesn't. I can't mess this up, Janine. If you knew. He trails off and scratches at his eyes, combing his hair back with both hands. I'm surprised when he stands and comes over to me. I stare wide-eyed from the chair I sit in and watch him as he crouches down in front of me. I'm close enough to smell his intoxicating scent and dive into the depth of his eyes. I said that's why I didn't call before, but I, when I walked in and saw you, I felt like a complete idiot. I want you, Janine, no matter who doesn't want me to. His voice gets deeper than before and it washes down my body pooling in a place I forgot existed until I met him. I swallow. Really? I whisper. He licks his lips, trailing his eyes over me slowly. His hands reach up and grab my calves, and my breath hitches. Yeah, really. You want me like as a friend, or... I giggle, doing the same thing he did to me. He laughs a fully delicious rumble in his chest I hadn't heard before. What about my dad? I mean, obviously he can't find out. I break off. He shrugs. I'd rather deal with that later. He leans in closer and I stop breathing altogether. I have horrible kissing experience. It should just be counted as none at all. The closer he gets, the more my mind wanders until I can't even make a coherent thought. I inhale his swarming scent. His lips get close enough to mine. I feel his warm breath fan across. He seems to grow tired of dancing around it when he just crosses the space and crushes his lips to mine. I am caught on a gasp when he parts my lips and deepens the kiss. I reach out and grasp his face his stubble licking my palm. I turn my head into the kiss and inhale, 
getting all the air I need to continue. His grip tightens on my legs before he moves his hands and cups my face. His hands are warm, thumbs calloused as they brush across my cheekbones. His fingers lace into my hair, and I know it will tangle, but I don't care. The kiss feels so real, and I don't know what to do except to kiss him back as hard as I can. And he is damn good at it. Even with no tongue, the kiss feels like sex itself. But he breaks away too soon, and I'm left struggling to breathe. I drop my hands from him, touching my fingers against my lips. They're warm and tingly, just like his eyes are looking at me right now. Sorry, I had to. I would have waited until at least the first date. He grins, tucking my hair away before moving his hands. I smile. Date? I get excited. I've never really been on a first date before with anyone. My life has been group outings and accidentally ending up alone with a guy. Yeah, date. I giggle. We should finish up work before we get too distracted. He nods in agreement. I stand, too fast, I think, and my head spins. I know it's not just from the mind-blowing kiss, but from not having eaten all day. Wow. Spencer stands, his hands steadying me at my waist. I guess I'm not as out of practice as I thought I was. He chuckles. I swat at his chest, but accept the help. My body presses to his. I breathe out, and my breasts brush against him. I shiver from the feeling because it makes me feel more like a woman when he holds me like this. Nice try. I forgot to eat breakfast. I'm just a little light-headed, I explain. He nods once and smirks. Good thing I always bring snacks. His hands move around my waist, sliding across the front of my stomach before they leave me. I get a little self-conscious about it, but he doesn't notice. I follow him out of the room. It's like walking back into daylight in the shop. There are a few people browsing around, and I feel bad we were just in their sucking face. He reaches in his jacket, leaning over a box by the register, and hands me a candy bar. Go recharge. I got these people. He grins, the one that makes me just smile back without thinking. Thanks. I take it and go into the back room to eat it. I feel better only halfway through and realize how sluggish I was. I try to make it seem like I am working, but all I can do is think about that kiss, about Spencer actually wanting me. He's more sincere than I thought he was. Genuine. And I know he didn't get that from the club. It makes me want to find out what actually makes him himself, where he came from, all that stuff. I wouldn't know if any other guys at the club or in school liked me the same way, but they never did anything about it. People who know my dad don't try to know me. That's just the way it is. But Spencer is willing to risk whatever it is he has at the club for me. I don't know how far this will go, but I feel like he deserves more than for it to be something casual that threatens his place at the club. I know my dad better than anyone. And if I tell him up front, he would understand. But I don't know Tank. I don't know what it is he might do to a member that crosses him. And I don't want Spencer to be my way of finding out. Chapter 7 Spencer Roland and I haven't spoken since that day at the gym. I thought I had just one thing to worry about. Now there are two. I had that shitty feeling in the pit of my stomach for a long time after seeing Janine. I felt bad for even thinking it, for this being our situation. But even though I was mad at Roland, I didn't want to do anything that would jeopardize my place in the club, the one that he had got me into and helped me to turn my life around. Damn. Why did Janine have to be Tank's daughter? Couldn't she have been anyone else, even if it was in the club? But no, this is just my luck. I can't stop thinking about her. Every day I look at her contact info on my phone and wish I could just text her and tell her why I'm so hesitant about this, but I don't. It wouldn't be fair to put all that on her. It isn't her fault who birthed her. 
I, of all people, know that. Hey, dipshit, there's a pizza in the fridge. Roland barges into my room. I've been dreading going to the shop today. It just reminds me of Janine now. But I can't miss work because I have a pension for a girl I can't have. You don't knock? What if I was jacking off? I throw my pillow at him, standing in the doorway. He shrugs. Wouldn't be the first time. Are you done avoiding me like a preteen? I laugh and sit up. I'm not avoiding you. I'm avoiding you asking me about doing shit at the club that I don't want to do. I scratch my bare chest and yawn. Sleeping in till noon isn't the best idea. And I won't ask about it anymore. I look at his blank expression. He probably just needed someone to talk to. Okay. I get up and stretch. You coming to the club tonight? He asks. It's Friday, so I don't really have a choice, but I just confirm that I am for the sake of solidarity. He leaves, and then I piss and shower before getting dressed. I take the bike to work, which I've been doing since I got it. It's actually easier to lug around than my truck. I park out front and then start out back to take the trash out and check the back door is still locked. If it's open, someone probably tried to break in. We share the space with the shop right next to us, a bargain store or something, but their owner never does shit. The last thing I expected was to see Janine here, but of course, I don't get the courtesy from fate or whoever. I told her I would text her, and I didn't. I'm not surprised when she doesn't want to speak to me. Saying I complicate things is an understatement. I have legit ruined people's lives just for being there, but it doesn't seem that good of an excuse to her. Only the truth will do, and it takes the most vapid pair of girls to give me the push I need to tell her. I don't want women that pretend, that throw themselves at me even. I want what I had with Janine, being able to talk to someone and have a real conversation. The way I felt in those short moments with her, it would be worth everything, even... I walk where she hid out in the back room to try and redeem myself somehow. Hey! I leaned against the doorframe and look at her. She looks absolutely gorgeous, as she always does. Her wildly curly hair is a little less wild today, but still beautiful. And I saw her earlier in those jeans she has on. I've never seen a riper ass and pair of legs in my life. I tell myself to focus, though, before I say the wrong thing again. Hi. She looks up from the inventory sheets. Can I sit? Don't you have a conversation to get back to? She sighs, her words sharp. I laugh and walk over to the spare chair across from the desk. Are you jealous of the groupies? I smile at her, finding it hard not to make jokes with her. I saw her face when she saw me talking to those girls, and I wish that she hadn't. I'm not exactly an asshole. I talked back to them as much as they talked to me, but when they invited me to some sort of graduation pool party, I quickly declined. I am definitely not the 22-year-old that hangs around high school parties. The groupies? She screws up her face, her button nose scrunching up. It might be my favorite thing that she does. I lick my lips, nodding. Yeah, you know, they hang around the club and here sometimes. I learned about them from Logan, and I'm glad that I did. They seemed like regular girls at first, but after I started seeing the same ones every other day, I caught on. Oh. I take a deep breath and try to figure out how to word this. I don't think I have ever actually apologized to someone before, not like this. I've said it in passing, but I hadn't really meant it. This time I mean it. I hate that I probably made her feel like I lied or that I didn't like her, because I do like her a whole fucking lot. I am sorry, Janine, about not calling. I take another breath and look into her eyes. She seems to soften upon seeing me, and I find it hard to continue just from how vulnerable she looks. She needs this. She has to know why. Why didn't you? I mean, is there a good reason, or are you just sorry? She asks. Her voice is the softest I've ever heard it, and I disappear inside her conscience. It forces the truth out of me. I moisten my lips again and lean forward, drawing my hands together and clasping my fingers. It was because of your dad. 
which I know sounds shitty, but you have to understand that this club was like my thousandth chance, and I can't fuck things up, because then my brother will kill me. I laugh, but I don't find it funny at all. My brother asked for a really simple thing, and I can't believe this is what might make me fuck it up. But I don't care about that anymore. I want Janine to be mine. I just need to figure out how. Who is your brother? I frown. That's what you got out of that? I shake my head and laugh under my breath. My brother is the vice president, Roland. She giggles, something passing over her face that I can't place. That's not all I got out of that. I'm sorry that my father scares you, she says. There is a mocking sense to her tone, and I frown. I try and find my words so it doesn't sound like I think her dad might be the biggest ass on the planet. He doesn't... I can't mess this up, Janine. If you knew... I trail off. My nerves make me scratch at my heating face and comb my hair back in frustration. I feel like I am too far away from her. Something about her just grounds me. I get up and walk over to her, inhaling her calming scent as soon as I get close enough. I crouch down in front of her, taking in the softness of her skin and kindness in her eyes. She's too good and pure for me. I know it already. I said that's why I didn't call before, but I... When I walked in and saw you, I felt like a complete idiot. I want you, Janine, no matter who doesn't want me to. I lower my voice on purpose, not wanting to sway her, but knowing the effect it has on women. It seems to work when she swallows audibly. Really? She whispers. I lick my lips again trailing my eyes over her slowly. I reach around and grab her calves, feeling her warmth even through the denim. I feel her flinch, too, as her breath rises once. Yeah, really, I tell her, and mean it. You want me, like, as a friend, or... She giggles, messing with me the same way I messed with her. I laugh aloud from purely being happy. I'm glad that she forgave me. I don't know what I might have done if I didn't have a second chance. I almost screwed the whole thing up, but I know for sure that I will definitely call when I say I will. What about my dad? I mean, obviously he can't find out. Her eyes widen as she stumbles over her words, trailing off. I shrug. I'd rather deal with that later. I lean in closer to her, and I can hear her stop breathing. Her skin flushes around her cheeks and ears. I salivate at the simple thought of tasting her, of feeling her soft, full lips against mine. My breath falls short, and only one thing will steady it. My lips on hers. So I do. I kiss her like the fucking ship is going down, and I've never even been on a boat. Her lips are as soft and pliable as I imagined. I coax them open and suckle her lips before I deepen the kiss. It's just my lips moving against hers, but it's all I need. Otherwise, I'll get carried away. All the blood in my body is already trailing to one place. And I need to not lose my shit in here. Her soft hands come up and cradle my face. Her palms against my jaw. Something about that gesture feels too sweet to me. And it tightens my chest. And I deepen the kiss in response. I move my hands from her legs to her face. Feeling her softness under my rough hands for the first time. A kiss has never been like this to me, never felt like this. I would just take it further if I don't stop, so I do. We pull apart, and I catch my breath, as she does. She touches her fingers to her lips, looking at me in shock, like it wasn't obvious that all I want to do is kiss her. Sorry, I had to. I would have waited until at least the first date. I smile, tucking her curly hair behind her ear. I'm pretty sure I almost tangled it at the back, but there's nothing I can do about that. Date? Her smile is sheepish. I nod and laugh at her once. Yeah, date. She giggles softly. We should finish up work before we get too distracted. I am starting to like the sound of her giggling too much, but I agree with her anyway. She stands and sways a bit before I rise and catch her. I grip her waist and watch her blink rapidly. Wow, I chuckle. 
I guess I'm not as out of practice as I thought I was. I smile when she looks at me. She swats at my chest, but doesn't really make an attempt to move. I realize how close we are, how good it feels to hold her. Her breasts press against my chest for a second, and I tense up, really needing to get out of here before I lose all self-control. Nice try. I forgot to eat breakfast. I'm just a little lightheaded, she says. I nod in understanding and smile. Good thing I always bring snacks. I take my hands from her waist, dragging around her stomach just to hold on a bit longer. It's nice to not feel too much bone when I do that. She flinches, but I don't say anything. I lead her out of the room, surprised there are customers. I don't at all feel bad about it because Darius used to hook up with girls back there anyway. Maybe that's where all the sexual energy in the room came from. Go recharge. I got these people. I hand her my candy bar, not even caring about looking forward to it. Thanks. She smiles, heading to the back. I take care of the customers, and they leave right after. I take the opportunity to balance out the drawer and whatnot so we can just get out of here soon. We close at five every day, which is the perfect time because that's when I go crazy at being here alone. Since Janine is here, though, I plan on heading back to talk to her again before my phone buzzes. Ass hat brother, we need you to man the bar tonight. I roll my eyes and groan. I had a date with takeout in my bed. Me. Yeah, okay. He texts me again, but I ignore it. I walk to the back, and Janine is staring at the inventory sheets again. Is that your favorite thing to do or something? I announce myself and walk around the desk to her. She looks up at me and smiles. No, I was just bored. You can go if you have plans. I told my dad I would close up. I shake my head. I don't have plans. Even if I did, I wouldn't leave you here alone. I smile. She blushes and looks away. I wish it wasn't so surprising to her that she could be chosen. Well, it's about time anyway. I do have to go to the club, though, if you want to come, I tell her. She laughs. I already told my dad I would come anyway. I nod. Cool, then. Let's get the hell out of this place. About an hour later, she is locking the front door, and we're leaving. I try not to stare at her too much, but somehow the sunset made her even more beautiful. I realize her hair has some hazel to it, making this muddle, curly hair falling down her back. My eyes drift to her ass in those jeans again, and I already know that I'm done for. You want to take the bike? I ask her. She eyes it funny, but not like she's afraid of it, which makes sense considering who she is. I watch her bite down on her lip and stare me in the eye. We're going to the club, Spencer. I smile and step in front of her. Hmm, say my name like that again. She laughs, pressing her hands to my chest. I mean it. That won't look very good. I shrug. We'll just say we were at the shop, which we were. I lick my lips, and she still seems cautious. Come on, if we're going to do this, we have to try and be normal about it in front of them, I tell her. And it's true. We can't be suspicious in public and only hide out together. It would look way too obvious. Yeah, okay. She shrugs, following me over. Cars whip past us on the street, and the only thing I focus on is her. I start up my bike, for the first time actually glad that I have it, because her body presses to mine, and I feel like a new man. Her arms come around my front, and I cover them with mine for a sec, before I peel off and head for the club. Chapter 8. Spencer I didn't fully appreciate this bike until Janine was on the back of it, wrapped around me the way she was. I see why the guys like them so much, and I guess why women like them so much, too. I park out to the side of the club, where I usually do, with the other guys that work inside. When we have certain club nights, it's really packed, and some of the other regular club members help out with the orders which just means that I have as much work to do as the bar, regardless. 
I'm still fairly certain about showing up with her, making it look normal, but I'm going to have to try even harder not to look like I am completely into her. Other guys can tell, and I'll stick out like a sore thumb if I keep looking at her like I want to fuck her, which is becoming an increasing problem. Are you sure about this? Maybe you should go in the back, Janine says, after getting off the bike. I laugh at her and put the extra helmet back into the seat cover. So I have to go in the back? I walk closer to her, standing against the brick wall on the side. There is no one around right now. The side entrance to the garage is closed off, too. Well, it wouldn't make sense for me to go in the back, since I'm me. She smirks, and I find her absolutely adorable in this moment. I grin and lean down to kiss her. She tenses up, at first, before kissing me back. I swipe my tongue against her lips. She opens up and swirls her tongue around mine. The nerves in my body come to life and I know I need to stop before I lose myself. No one's going in the back. Fix your lip gloss. Let's go. I step away from her, needing the air to breathe and calm myself. She grins and reapplies her gloss. I watch, entrapped with her as she does. Good? Yep. We start walking around the corner. Two other guys are walking in at the same time, and it's not missed the way they look at both of us. Hey! I greet them, how I always do, and whatever tension was there quickly passes, and we keep walking. I glance down at Janine, who frowns up at me, since I was right, I suppose. The round tables are somewhat full, music and clinking glasses fill the room, along with obnoxious laughter from the guys. Spence! Logan waves me over from behind the bar, grinning. I look down at Janine. See? Told you it would be fine. I nudge her arm and then walk off to the bar. I take my cut off and stuff it in the drawer under the register. What's up? I shake Logan hello and grin back. Why are you walking in with Tank's daughter? He pulls me aside and talks low. I frown. She has a name, you know. He laughs once. See, it's stuff like that that has me worried. I chuckle. Nothing to worry about, man. Thanks, though. I cross my arms and lean against the counter. He still gives me an off look. It kind of pisses me off how no one here sees her as a person, only someone they don't want to bother talking to because they're scared shitless. It really isn't fair to her. Even if I wasn't into her, it wouldn't be fair to anyone. You didn't answer my question, he says. I sigh. We were at the shop together. Her dad asked her to come, and I figured we'd save time just coming together. Besides, I didn't want to leave her in the dark alone. Pretty sure Tank wouldn't want her to be either. <laughs> so you're the good guy? He starts laughing. Pretty much. We need to restock? I ask, moving the conversation along. I turn to see Janine moving through the back of the bar with Jack and Al. She must be on her way to see her dad. She disappears around the corner where his office is and confirms that. Beers. There's some liquor out back, too. Oh, I'll get that. No probs. I reply with sarcasm. He shakes his head at me and laughs. I head off in that direction, kind of glad I don't have to deal with customers right now. The back entrance opens up to the garbage area and such. I smell kitchen oil and trash. I grab the two boxes and get out of there fast. When I walk back in, carrying two huge white boxes of liquor, I see Janine sitting with her dad, Jack, and Al, picking at a huge bowl of fries. I grin to myself, but it's funny how she looks completely off limits at that time. She doesn't notice me staring when I do, and I just keep walking, going about my work. It feels weird with her here, knowing we just made out at the shop and right by the club, but I'm committed to being as normal about this as possible. Has Rafe talked to you? Logan asked me after a while. The bar has calmed down, and I refill a draft beer every few minutes instead of seconds. I wipe at my forehead, slick with sweat, almost forgetting Rafe is my brother's club name. About? He gives me a look. Club needs someone to gather some intel. Intel? God, I knew this place was a cult. I chuckle. Logan shakes his head, 
They've all heard me say that before, and it gets funnier every time because it just starts sounding truer. We're not, but there are some issues with the other clubs. We figured you would be good at it. We? Who is we? I laugh. He shrugs. The execs. Why do you think Tank was okay with even letting you in the club? I mean, sure, he took your bro's word for it, but it's because of what you used to do as much as anything. What I used to do. I make myself a strawberry lemonade and make the sugar calm me down. Breaking and entering, not getting caught doing it. I laugh then, because he is right. I was never caught, just sold out. But that was a long time ago. I'm half mad at Roland for telling my life story, letting everyone at the club, or I guess just the execs, know what I used to occupy myself with. It's none of their business now, since I don't do it anymore, but they seem to think that it is. I'm tabling this conversation. I clap his shoulder and walk to the end of the bar, sipping my drink. My eyes roam around to find Janine again, playing darts with Al. I try to look elsewhere every few seconds, so I don't look obvious, but most of the time I'm just staring at Janine. She really does look damn good in those jeans, and when I glance at the other guys, none of them are looking at her. How are they so good at pretending she doesn't exist? It's weird. You look ridiculous. Roland comes up on the side where I didn't see him. I flip him off. It's a balanced drink. I'm headed out. See at home. He swirls his finger around in my drink, and I try and grab him from over the bar, but he moved too fast. Fuck off, and I'm still pissed at you. He just chuckles at me and frowns. Old news. He walks out and talks to some of the guys on the way. I frown at my ruined drink and end up pouring it out. Since it's almost closing time, for the bar at least, I drain the sinks and scrub the brushes against each other with hot water. It's easy work. I just don't like doing it sometimes. Like tonight, when I would rather be with Janine, anywhere else but here. Was that strawberry lemonade? I think I am imagining her voice when I hear it, but I turn and find it is her. She leans on the bar, holding her chin on her hand with a sly smile. I grin when I see her. Yeah, you want one? I ask, even though I put everything in the fridge and took down the drink machine. She sits on the bar stool. Sure. I can't help but glance around for her subtle bodyguards, but I don't see them. The only other people in here are two older guys at the pool table. I make her drink and set it in front of her. Thanks. She sips at it, and I watch her lips curl around the straw like a man possessed. Where are your henchmen? I ask. She giggles. What? Looking up at me with her bright eyes. I lean over the bar, throwing my towel over my shoulder. Your follow guards or whatever. Oh, Jack took some girl home. Al went home to his wife, I think. And your old man? In the office. I nod once. She drinks more lemonade and then checks her phone, texting someone. I watch her like she's a show and don't get bored at all. When I look around at the bar for a second, I feel her staring at me, and I let her for a while. That's before a flash goes off right in my face. <laughs> what was that? I laugh. She looks absolutely mortified instead. Her eyes are wide and she turns her phone face down instead. Oh my, I was... Never mind. I grin. You were taking a picture of me. Her cheeks blush that beautiful crimson color, and I lick my lips at wanting to taste her every time she does that. I wasn't... I, I was just... You're a crappy liar, Angel, but I appreciate the effort, as long as you got my good side. She leans back and clears her throat, crossing her arms. What's that? I watch her chest push against the shirt and ignore my twitching cock. Every side is my good side. I steal her drink and take a sip. Wow, I'm good at that. I hand it back to her. Who's the picture for? I ask. She stutters over her words, trying to lie again until she takes out her phone and distracts herself with the screen once more. My friend. Wow, I'm in with your friends now, too. I laugh. 
She rolls her eyes at me. I have one friend. It's not plural. I nod in response. When Darius walks out of the back, I pretend to be wiping at the counter. He nods to me as he leaves, and I do the same. Doesn't it bother you that everyone around here pretends like you don't exist? Her expression falls, and then she looks back at me. Not really. I'm used to it. Here? I ask. Yeah, here. Everywhere, mostly. Especially high school. I'm pretty sure college won't be any different. I frown at her and look confused. She raises her brow in question. But why? Why? Yeah, I laugh once. I mean, you're sexy as hell. Funny. Why would anyone not see you? She smiles, sadly. I guess we went to a different kind of high school, and I wasn't like the other girls that walked around half-dressed and threw themselves all over guys, so I was practically invisible. It was easier that way anyway. No one bothered me. She giggles, and even though that sucks, I don't feel bad for her because she doesn't feel bad for herself at all. Hmm. Well, I see you, and I'd like to see more of you. I lean closer to her on the bar, crossing my arms. She tenses up, but then leans in too. Is that how you ask me for a naked picture? She jokes. I laugh aloud. No, how about a real date, tomorrow. She blinks as she thinks it over, and I wait for her. I suppose that would be okay. Good. She smiles. I wish I could kiss her right now, but I don't really have a death wish, and I'm getting better at controlling my impulses. Don't you want to get out of here? I ask her. I don't know. I'd have to tell my dad, and then I will have to tell him who I am leaving with. You're rambling. Just tell him the truth. I'm driving you back to your car. She swallows. But... I'd tell him, but that wouldn't make much sense now, would it? She sighs. Yeah, okay. She still looks apprehensive about it as she walks off, and I shamelessly watch her. I smirk to myself and then wash her glass, clean up the rest of the bar, and shut off the lights. I'm prepared to wait as long as I have to. At this point, I'm pretty sure I'll always be happy to wait for Janine. Chapter 9 Janine the only reason I wasn't going out of my mind was because the burgers at the club were really good. There was like a mini restaurant inside that had those and fries and that was it. Half their money here came from that. But Dad made me talk to Jack and Al like the whole time, which was fine. I always caught them up on my life and such. But Dad was being increasingly weird about it. He didn't know I came in with Spencer. And no one in the club was like a tattletale or something, so no one said anything. I don't know what he would have done, honestly. I'm convinced I might be overreacting, but I don't want to find out any time soon. I'm going to get some work done in the office, Dad says to me, after he's made me talk everyone to death. Okay. After that, Jack and Al left pretty soon after, too. I was glad to finally be somewhat alone with Spencer. The other guys at the bar were old and not even in the club. I was slyly watching Spencer the whole night while he was at the bar, the way he smiled and chatted up the customers, walked around like he owned the place. He was just super hot for no reason. Was that strawberry lemonade? I walk over to the bar and ask him. I couldn't figure out what to say, and that kind of came out. But he turned around, smiling, so it seemed like it was good enough. Yeah, you want one? he asks, cocking his brow up. I sit down. Sure. I'm pretty sure I only sat because I knew my dad was in his office, and there aren't any cameras. I watch him make my drink like a pro, his arms flexing when he shakes the glass. Thanks. I sip it, sweet and tangy, just like I want it. Where are your henchmen? he asks me. What? I giggle, blinking at him in shock. He leans over the bar, and I get distracted by his, his face, pretty much. Your follow guards, or whatever. Oh, Jack took some girl home. Al went home to his wife, I think. And your old man? In the office, I answer. 
My phone buzzes, and I know that it's Adriana. I periodically updated her and kept it up. When she asked for a pic of Spencer, I figured now was the perfect time. He was currently looking elsewhere, his jawline all taut and everything. I took out my camera and clicked without even thinking. The flash went off, and my stomach sunk inside itself. What was that? He laughs. My heart pattered faster than I could keep up with it, and I felt my face going hot. Oh, my, I, I was... never mind. I squeaked. He smiled slowly. You were taking a picture of me. I wasn't. I was just... I couldn't figure out how to explain a bright light. Saying I was going for a selfie was just uncharacteristic. You're a crappy liar, Angel, but I appreciate the effort, as long as you got my good side. His deep voice sounded better than ever. What's that? I leaned back and crossed my arms. Every side is my good side. He steals my drink and sips from the straw. Wow, I'm good at that. Who's the picture for? He asked me. And I try to figure out how to lie to him and come up short. My friend? I clear my throat. My body still feels cold as ever on the inside. My skin prickles just from being around Spencer. And I'm pretty sure that I'm permanently blushing. Wow. I'm in with your friends now, too, he laughs. I have one friend. It's not plural. I roll my eyes at him, and he just keeps laughing. This is mortifying. Doesn't it bother you that everyone around here pretends like you don't exist? He asks me after a while. I get halfway through my lemonade and have to use the bathroom, but there's no way I'm getting up right now. I let my face fall, though. From hearing the question, I try to ignore all the time. Not really. I'm used to it. I shrug, even though I don't really mean it. Or want to mean it. Here? Yeah, here. Everywhere, mostly. Especially high school. I'm pretty sure college won't be any different. I sigh. That's the unfortunate truth. It was what I planned to do this summer. Experience things. But that feels too much like using him. And I don't want to do that. It's not about that anymore. But why? Why? I asked back. Yeah. I mean, you're sexy as hell. Funny. Why would anyone not see you? The only thing I got out of that was him saying I'm sexy, and I stay there for quite a while until I can process. I guess we went to a different kind of high school, and I wasn't like the other girls that walked around half-dressed and threw themselves all over the guys so I was practically invisible. It was easier that way anyway. No one bothered me. I half laugh, but it doesn't feel funny anymore. Hmm. Well, I see you, and I'd like to see more of you. He leans in close, and I try to find where the lie is, but there isn't one. Is that how you ask me for a naked picture? I can only figure out what to say by joking. He laughs, his deep boom of a laugh. No, how about a real date, tomorrow? I blink a lot, which I do when I'm trying to think. I wonder if he's being serious, but I figure he won't be messing with me like that. I stare at him and try to find the tell, but he's as serious as ever, and it makes me nervous. I keep forgetting this guy actually likes me, but not that I like him a lot, too. I suppose that would be okay. I swallow. I don't plan on telling him it would be my first real date. That's too much pressure. Good. Good. I smile at him. His lips twitch, and I notice he does that before he is about to kiss me. But he can't right now. Do you want to get out of here? He asks, and I'm shocked. I don't know. I'd have to tell my dad, and then I'll have to tell him who I'm leaving with. You're rambling. Just tell him the truth. I'm driving you back to your car. But I swallow hard. Thinking of my father doesn't make me nervous. But telling him about a guy or being anywhere with a guy? Yikes. I'd tell him, but that wouldn't make much sense, now would it? I sigh. Yeah, okay. I take one last sip of my lemonade and then head back there. He is probably just on his computer or pretending to look at tax forms. He hires someone to do it, but I guess he likes to be involved. 
I use the bathroom by his office first, the one no one is allowed to use, hence why it is so clean. Dad? I knock on the door and walk in. Hey, Jeannie. He smiles, and he is looking at tax forms, or pretending to. I gotta get out of here, Dad. I'm tired. Well, I'll just finish up. No, that's fine. I stand on the other end of his desk and twiddle my thumbs. Um, I came with Spencer, so I'm just gonna leave with him, I say quickly. He drops the papers in a comical way and looks up at me. Spencer? You came here with him? Yes, Dad. He gave me a ride. We were at the shop together, you know, where you sent me after begging for my help. My car is still there, and he's just going to drive me back, I explain. He still looks like a deer caught in headlights. Well, I don't know about that. Spencer. I don't know him all that well yet. If you let him in the club, he must be a stand-up guy. The way he's looking at me almost makes me spill it all out, but I refrain. Yeah, but... Look, Dad, he isn't even my type, okay? If you must know. He cringes and waves me off. He pauses for a while and then sighs. Just call me when you get to the house. I'll be here late anyway. Okay. I walk over and hug him, kiss his cheek goodbye, so he'll calm down. I see the vein pulsing on his forehead, and I hope I didn't just give my dad a heart attack. What took you so long? Spencer grins at me from the bar, sitting on one of the stools. He has his legs open, and as I walk up to him, I force my eyes from his filled-out crotch area. I clear my throat. Um, my dad might have had a heart attack. He frowns. What the fuck? I laugh. Well, I told him I was going to pick up my car with you and that we came in together. I didn't ask you to do all that. He shakes his head. Oh, well, it's better that he knows everything. If I didn't tell him that, I would have tried to lie about something else, and then I would have told him we kissed. His fingertips press to the inside of my wrist, and I stop. He smirks. Rambling. But I get it. Let's get out of here. I follow him out, sort of watching his ass. Can we stop for food? I ask. He stops at his bike and gives me a funny look. What? I ask. We're in the closed-off part now, where no one can see us. He walks up close until every breath I take brushes my chest against his. My whole body comes alive when I'm near him, but when he touches me, I'm completely done for. You just ate. That was hours ago. Don't judge me. I'm not. He raises his hands in defense. I like a girl that can eat. I know just the place. I don't even look at the time when I hop on his bike. I slide my body up against his, wrapping my arms tight around his middle. His abs feel like rock against my palms. His back feels about the same way. I lay my cheek against it and feel his heartbeat, inhale the leather of his cut as he whips down the road. I don't know for how long he drives, but he stops soon after at a drive-in kind of place I've never seen before, and I grew up here. Best hot dogs in town, he says. I shrug and smile. Sounds good to me. We order from the outside machine and sit at a black park bench kind of table. His knee hits mine from the other side, and I try not to look as nervous as I feel. I shiver once, and he looks at me with concern. You cold? No, I'm fine. I wrap my arms around myself. He laughs and takes his jacket off anyway. You are. Here. He hands me his jacket. Wouldn't want you freezing to death. I put his jacket on and feel instantly better. It still has his warmth on it. You won't be cold? I look at his t-shirt and bare arms. No, I'm warm-blooded. He smirks, purposefully hitting his knee against mine. I let it stay there his warm leg against mine. Our food comes soon. It's hot and greasy and perfect. I half watch him eat like it's an erotic show, the way he licks his lips and fingers. Bad for my health. His was twice the size of mine because he was right. I did just eat, but I get hungry easily. Good, right? Yeah, thank you. He had paid before I got the chance. I drink down my water and feel absolutely full. 
He didn't have to pay. I'm a chivalrous man, but this isn't our date, just to be clear. I like to think I have more grandiosity than this. I giggle. That's a big word. He chuckles. I have the word of the day toilet paper, he jokes. English was my favorite subject in school, the days that I went, he says. I hated English. What did you like? He asks me. I sigh. Art, I reply. He raises his brows in shock. Really? I never would have guessed. I get that a lot. That's what I decided to go to college for, graphic design, I tell him, when I haven't even told anyone yet. Not even my parents or Adriana, which is weird considering she's my only friend, but Spencer, he's something else, and I don't know what yet. What do you like to design? Anything? He picks at a fry, and I wrap the jacket around myself more. It whips his scent my way, and I relax even more. It's like a drug. Um, abstract designs and stuff. I actually... I pause. My dad and I don't even talk about this. I designed the shirts for the shop. They've all been the same, just on different colors. No shit. I fucking love those shirts. I mean, I don't pay for them, but still. I laugh. Thanks. But I don't really tell anyone. It's a secret. Yep. I mean, it was Logan's idea to have the shop, but it was going to be just for smokes and stuff, a convenience store. But I told my dad about it, and he was all for it. I started off with a couple, and then what we have now. But I don't do it anymore. It's boring. Wow. Boring to be a hotshot designer? I nod with a smile. Pretty much. I get a very small commission, but it adds up. You bought your shirts the other day, though. Yeah, for the taxes, I giggle. He chuckles and nods once. That's really cool, Janine. Thank you. We sit there for a while before he drives me back to my car. I stand outside my door and try to force myself to get in, but I can't seem to. I miss him already, and I feel dumb for feeling like that. You ever car sit before? I ask him when he looks as hesitant as me. What? He laughs. I fiddle with my keys and stare at the gray asphalt. Um, you just sit in the car and listen to music or whatever. I realize it sounds like I'm asking him to do something else, a little less innocent. He smirks, his eyes gleaming. Sounds fun. He gets in the other side, and I half start the engine so it doesn't waste gas. His scent fills the car, and I watch as he funnily adjusts the seat. I forget how tall he is. This is a nice whip. He slides his hand over the dash. I prop my leg up on the seat and push it back a little from the steering wheel. My, uh, my dad bought it for me as a gift for my high school graduation. Wow, spoiled, he jokes. What? I'm not spoiled. My dad just feels bad. He sends us money, too much money. My mom tried not to use it at first, but I convinced her to at least get stuff for herself, I explain. Spencer nods and gives me a long look. I turn to him sideways, and he leans in close. Can I ask you something? Yeah. I moisten my lips and cock my head at him. He goes off in his head for a second and then looks at me. Why did your mom leave? I mean, I know the guys at the club are pretty scared of him, but I wondered if you... He blinks quickly and scratches at the back of his neck. I crane my neck and don't get what he's saying. If I... If you're afraid of him too, I mean, like... I gasp. Oh! I say slowly. Then I start laughing. He looks at me like I'm crazy. Sorry, I just... No, I'm not afraid of him. Neither was my mom. I'm laughing because people always assume that. School teachers, counselors, even my best friend. But no, my dad is a total teddy bear. He may have fake claws, but he's all fuzzy on the inside. With us, at least. He's different with the club. That's why my mom left. She didn't like where things were going. I sigh. I haven't really gotten into this in a while. In fact, I never even had to. 
When I was 12, the club started running drugs, and that was kind of my mom's last straw. They argued all the time for about a year, and then she took me and left. That was the ultimatum she gave him. For a long time, I was really mad that he chose the club. He finishes for me, and I'm grateful for it. Yeah, I don't think I've ever said that out loud before. I felt like that for a long time before I understood. And it's not like he left us. He didn't want a custody battle that affected me. He never neglected me, so that counts for something. I sigh. In fact, it counts for everything. I know my dad loves me, that he loves us both, and that it's just a shitty situation. The club is like a second child to him. He would do anything for it. I don't even know how he must have felt. Yeah, it does. I'm sorry you went through that. He sets his hand on my knee and squeezes. Thanks. I swallow. What about your parents? Is it just you and your brother? I ask. He tightens his jaw and squeezes my knee tighter. Uh, yeah, it's just us. And I don't really remember our parents. I was too young. We grew up in foster care. Oh, I trail off. I feel bad for not knowing what to say. Maybe I am spoiled. I'm sorry. I laugh nervously, paying more attention to the new song on the radio. That's okay. He rubs my leg and the energy changes immediately. I feel that shift in my body, around other areas I forgot existed, that he makes me pulse in. I lick my lips and look at him. He looks back at me and my lips, smiling. Then his lips are on mine, and I melt against him. It starts off slow, and I reach across to slide my fingers in his hair, holding him close. One of his hands grips my thigh. The other brushes my hair back and cradles my cheek. I inhale sharply when his tongue brushes mine, and he deepens the kiss. I turn my head and feel his lips harder against mine. The man kisses like a god, and I can barely keep up. He breaks from me for a hot second, and I inhale sharply before we go back to kissing like horny teenagers. I was only a teenager four months ago. I have no idea how old he is, though. I don't really care. I just know that he feels so good against me. I slide my hands down his neck, over his taut muscles. They are warm against my hand, and I squeeze, sliding my hand across to his chest and down his abs. I truly have no idea what I'm doing or how far I'm going to go. It just feels right. He does the same to me, sliding his hand down my body. He toys with the hem of my shirt, and I nod him forward. He lifts it. His palm slides against my skin, and I shiver at his warm, calloused touch. My hand stops at the hem of his jeans, not going any further, as much as I want to know what's underneath. We should stop before I really lose it. He breaks the kiss, breathing heavily. You drive me crazy. He pulls back, exhaling heavily and combing his hair back. I sit back on the seat and laugh. <laughs> Sorry. So this is car sitting. I sigh. Yeah, it is. I giggle. Except when everyone in high school was doing it, they were also having sex. I mutter. He laughs. Not helping. He adjusts himself in the seat, and I blush from just that. Is that when you... I laugh. God, no. I was at a soccer meet, an away game. The other team had a really nice equipment manager. I laugh to myself, remembering the nice enough guy that went to a high school far enough away that I would never see him again. I think I just wanted to get it over with, so I could say that I did. Not my brightest moment. Hmm. I never would have guessed. What did you think? I laugh. He smiles. I don't know. I mean, I thought, your dad is kind of overprotective. I nod. Yep, but not when I'm with my mom. I told her all about it. She took me to get birth control. She's that kind of mom. He chuckles. What about you? I told you mine. I nudge his knee. He shakes his head and laughs. I was 15 or 16, I don't really remember. Some other girl in the foster house we were in. 
I give him a funny look. She was older, wasn't she? By like a year, he defends. We laugh together and change the conversation swiftly. Why did you ask about my dad like that? I wonder aloud. He shrugs. I just thought it was weird how you were afraid to tell him we were leaving together. He just, he's overprotective, but he also only has one kid. Years ago, my mom took me away, and he thinks he chose the club over me. It would be worse if I was with someone at the club. He wouldn't forgive them for it. Gee, thanks. I grip his arm. I didn't mean it like that. I just meant it might show him what he did. But we should... Never mind. What? I shake my head. I don't know if I can really get into it now because I only thought about it once and wasn't ready to be that girl. I overthink, and I don't want to run him away by thinking too far into the future. It wouldn't be fair to him. We're just starting out, and I don't even know what we are. We haven't gone on a date yet anyway. But I did think about it. He nudges me, and I remember he asked me. I turn to look at him and sigh. Don't think I'm crazy. Impossible. He makes the scout's honor sign, and I giggle. I'm leaving for college in the fall. If I ever told him, it would only be if we were worth mentioning. I clear my throat and wait for his response. He ends up laughing and nodding instead. <laughs> I get it, he says, and that's it. I twist my lips and stare off in front of me, into the dark shop with all the lights off. A rather suggestive song comes on and I change the station. A sad one plays. Sorry, I didn't mean to... He cuts me off. It's fine, Angel. It's a tough sit, he sighs. Yeah. I swallow hard and wish I didn't do the whole clingy thing in the first place. Janine, look at me, he says. I fight past my pattering heartbeat and look at him. His eyes ground me so easily, and I wish that they didn't, but I'm not complaining right now. I think it's cute that you ramble and overthink things, and when I think about you, I think farther ahead than just the summer. Just so you know. I beam, smiling like a kid on Christmas. He smiles back and kisses me quickly, his lips swaying against mine. I should go. It's late. He groans under his breath, and I'm half glad he is sad to be leaving. Yeah, it's late. I actually start the engine and give him another long look. I'll call you tomorrow, discuss our date. He cups my cheek and tucks hair behind my ear before getting out of the car. He waits until I drive off, and I take deep breaths all the way home. He got me all hot and bothered, and now I have to just go home alone. My dad isn't there when I arrive, but I call and tell him that I made it, hoping he doesn't notice a difference in my voice. He must be busy, because he doesn't. I strip and get in the shower, really fighting my instincts. But God, Spencer is under my skin, right where I feel him the most. I soak myself down and slide my fingers between my legs, stroking until I fall over the edge. It doesn't feel nearly as good as I think it will with Spencer, but it scratches the itch well enough. I wear my big t-shirt to bed, smiling against the pillow, thinking of Spencer until I fall asleep. I can't believe he said he thinks far past the summer, that he feels the same way about me. I don't want to upset my dad, and I don't want to drive a wedge between us. But I don't want to miss out on something real just because of him. And I know that I have to try not to. Chapter 10 Janine Jeannie, come eat breakfast. I rolled over in bed and groaned, stuffing the pillow over my head like it would help. Dad was yelling up the steps when all I wanted to do is sleep. I shouldn't have come back so late last night, but I know I wouldn't have left Spencer just for the sake of not being tired. I hate how I am thinking of him as soon as I wake up, but I am. I'm far gone. Sweetie, you can't sleep all day. Dad knocks and enters my room, peeking his head in. I frown at him and glance at my pink wall clock, the only thing I didn't change, and it is barely noon. It's not all day, Dad. Leave me be. 
I roll over and stuff my face into the pillow. He chuckles. I made chocolate chip pancakes. You can't bribe me with food, I say with my eyes closed. He laughs again, and I feel his heavy footsteps come across the room, then my bed dipping at the foot from his weight. He rubs my back over the comforter, and I turn to look at him. You got home late last night, he says, halfway stern. I know he hasn't left the house yet at all because he's wearing flannel pants instead of jeans and has an old t-shirt on. His tattoos used to be weird to look at growing up, trailing all the way down his hands. But now, it's just normal. Yeah, so? I don't really have a curfew or anything. Even if I did, I always stayed at home anyway. Spencer didn't try anything with you, did he? He frowns. I giggled to hide my discomfort. I need to get better at lying. Technically, I tried things with Spencer, too, but he didn't ask me that. No, Dad, he's nice. They all are, sort of. I wipe at my eyes and sit up. He smiles and nods. Good. He stands and pats my head like I'm nine. Wake up, come eat. He shuts the door behind him and I groan internally, but I'm already awake anyway. I get up, go through my morning routine and dress in leggings and a sweater. Dad keeps it really cold in the house and I've yet to adjust. I find Dad at the dining table halfway through his breakfast. I make a plate and sit with him, contemplating my words. What if he had? I ask him, cutting at my food. Hmm? He lifts the paper and folds it, half paying attention. My heart stalls in my throat as I swallow and wonder what I am about to do. But I just have to know. If Spencer tried anything, what would you do? He drops the paper and his fork and gives me a funny look. Depends on what you would do first. I shrug. I wouldn't know. His expression drops and turns more serious. I almost regret asking him at all. My guys at the club know they're not supposed to try anything because they don't want to find out what happens if they do. But Spence, he's a new member. Still a prospect, basically. So, he'd get off easy or something? I try to pretend that I'm not that invested by still nibbling at my pancakes. No one gets off easy at the club, but maybe I'll ruin his life a little less. He chuckles, like it's funny, but I'm just more terrified. I finish the rest of my breakfast, surprisingly, and we move the conversation on to easier things for a bit. As I wash up, Dad comes over to help me put the dishes away. I talked to your mom this morning, he says and the plate nearly slips from my fingers. You did? I shut the water off and face him. He nods, crossing his arms and leaning against the counter. Yeah, I did. Who called who? I half smile, feeling like some sort of a matchmaker. This is the most I've bothered them about talking to each other, and I suppose that it worked. I called her, like a man is supposed to do. All she did was yell. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you. For advice? I smile, nudging his arm. He chuckles and shakes his head. No, Jeannie, we're your parents. I forget sometimes, I murmur, looking up at him. He grins behind his beard and shakes his head at me. All right, sweetie, whatever you say. We finish up, and I know I have to go to the shop later for a few hours, but not all day like yesterday. I don't know if Spencer will be there, but he also hasn't called yet, so I can't be sure. My mind keeps drifting over to our date tonight, and I get butterflies every time. I've never been on one before, and I kind of wish he would come to the door and pick me up, meet my dad and everything. But clearly, that isn't going to happen. We're both about to leave the kitchen before my phone rings, and it's across the counter. I see the caller ID and run to it before he can see. Phone's ringing he says, just before I grab it and cover the screen that reads Spencer across it. Thanks for breakfast! I run off, racing up the stairs and answering on the last ring as I shut the door. Hello? I answer, half panting. Why are you breathing like that? He asks, humor in his voice. His deep, warm voice sounds just as good over the phone. I smile. 
Um, I was with my dad when the phone rang. I go over and sit on my windowsill, smiling out at our green grass. Oh, shit. Sorry. I giggle. That's okay. I'm glad you called. He chuckles. Yeah, me too. Sorry I called so late. I don't really wake up early. I can understand that. What are you doing? I bite my lip and smile like a giddy schoolgirl. He kind of just makes me into one. I'm eating cold pizza on the couch. You. It's better cold, I promise. And watching trash TV. That's the best TV. I just had breakfast, a real one, I tease. He sighs. I was going to sit around all day until Tank called me and said I have to go in a shop for a while. Oh, that sucks, I say. I find it weird how my dad just told me I didn't have to go, but now it makes sense. He probably suspects something already and isn't saying anything. I don't want to warn Spencer about it because then he might back off, getting worried about being caught or something, so I keep it to myself. Yeah, not really. It's something to do, but I was hoping to pick you up around six. I smile. That sounds great, except... Or maybe we can meet up. He laughs once. Yeah, I smile. That sounds good. I sigh, sadly, because it sucks how we can't really do things normally. I can't wait to see you, he says. I beam, smiling from ear to ear. Me too. There is some noise on his end, and he says he has to go before he hangs up. I stare at my phone, smiling, replaying his voice in my head. I do that for a while until I remember what Dad said about calling Mom. I'm due to check in with her anyway, so I call her up. Janine, I'm so glad you called! She shrieks. Mom is easily overexcited, but it's probably just because I am her only child. Hi, Mom. I smile. Her honeyed voice is always a comfort to me. What have you been up to? She asks. In that way, she kind of knows something is wrong already. It makes my throat tighten at all that's really wrong, but I didn't call for me right now. Oh, nothing. Dad and I had breakfast together. He, uh, told me that he called you, I say cautiously. Good thing, too, because there is complete silence on her end for a while. Eventually, she sighs and confirms. Yeah, he did. Early as hell, too. He woke me up. I giggle. He woke me up, too. I guess that's a thing he does. Yeah, well. I heard her doing something on the other end that sounded like she is in her bakery. What did you guys talk about? My mom and I have virtually no boundaries. I guess not really with either of my parents about certain things. Nothing really. He said you yelled the whole time. I laugh. I yelled once. That man is so sensitive, she says. And I hear the smile in her voice. She sounds happy when she talks about Dad sometimes. That has to count for something. Okay, well, what did he say? I chew the inside of my cheek. Not much. He just called to see how I was doing. He does that. I didn't know that, I say. Yeah, well, he's a good man that way, except we don't actually talk about anything usually. But he was asking about me visiting for Fourth of July. You should come. I'll be missing you by then. She giggles. You aren't missing me now? You know what I mean, Mom. Yeah, well, that's why I yelled. I said I wouldn't come back until he started listening to me. Needless to say, he hasn't listened yet. Give him some time. He is a man, after all. Since when do you know about men? She laughs. Uh, I don't, I guess. No special boys over there? I groan, thinking of Spencer. No, you know Dad would have a coronary if I had any. Your dad is all talk, baby. Don't worry about that. You can't be alone forever. I may have to. We swiftly change the conversation to easier things. She has a new cake recipe she wants to try out for the cupcakes and is hiring a new cashier for the shop. I would work there sometimes to help out, but she felt bad about asking me. Now that I'm away, she doesn't really have a choice, and I'm going off to college. Will you try and talk to Dad again, just to see me? I try and bribe her, 
But we both know I wasn't enough the first time. Yeah, I'll think about it. Call me soon, okay? Yeah, I will. Bye, Mom. I hang up and try to figure out what I'll do for the rest of the night until I have my date with Spencer. After tearing my closet apart, I decide I have nothing to wear. With only a few hours until I meet Spencer, I start to panic. I want to look as good as possible, more than my jeans and t-shirt ensemble I have down. I know he probably won't care, but I do. It's our first date, my first ever. I don't want to screw it up. Adriana comes to the rescue. Her closet is basically a store, and I wasn't about to spend money. Do you want to look hot or cute? She asks. I sit on her bed, a plush purple comforter and black headboard. Her room looks like a catalog, too, which would surprise someone living on a teacher's salary. But it's just her, and sometimes her parents still bankroll her life. It's why she lives in the nicest building in town and has an entire room for a closet. Um, I don't know. I giggle, laying on the bed. She frowns, looking down at me with her hands on her hips and smiling. I wish I could just look like her sometimes. In just shorts and an old t-shirt, she looks hot, while I look like a vagrant. Oh my God, hot it is. She disappears in her closet, and I protest. No, I can't pull off hot. I'll look like I'm trying to be hot, which isn't a good look. I'm not like Spencer. He's just plain hot, sexy as hell. I'm about as ordinary as it gets. She comes back with a few options, things that look short and tight. This one is insane. I don't even know why I'm trying. I drop the fabric back onto the bed and frown. Don't worry, you'll look amazing regardless. So, here it comes. I only told her the gist of things, and I've been waiting for her to pry me for the full report. Is he a good kisser? Judging from the photo. The photo that made me look like a stalker. I still shiver in mortification at having taken that photo. And yeah, he is. It's not like I've kissed a bunch of people to compare, but I really don't need to. Good. Every girl deserves that. I can't tell you how many shitty kissers I've met in my life. I laugh at her. I'm going to need different options. I get up and go in her closet myself. It's all color and dress coded too. I have no idea where we're going, so I want to dress on the side of caution. We wear the same size of jeans, as long as it's stretchy, and I just have to roll the ends. So I find one of those pants that's high-waisted and a black frilly crop top to go with it that has thin straps. I'll probably wear a sweater or something, but today is particularly warm. Cute, right? I ask Adriana. She raises her brows and nods. I guess if cute is what we're going for. Are you sure you don't want a mini skirt or something? I don't want to show off my body. That's kind of deceptive, isn't it? I ask. I don't really do this date thing, clearly. Hmm, probably, you're right. It's not like you're picking him up at a club or something. Yes, I know. Thanks for the help. I stuff the clothes in my bag. Since I have a little bit of time, we move to her kitchen for a snack, as she still pesters me about Spencer. So what else did you guys do in your car? I groan. Nothing. We talked and made out. That's it. Yeah, but I bet you wanted to do more. She giggles. I blush at the memory alone. Yeah, I did. But it just didn't feel right for both of us, I say. All last night, I kept replaying that kiss and his hands on my bare skin. I almost hardly slept. I get that. What about your dad? She leans forward. I don't know, honestly. I can't read him. Sometimes I think I could tell him the truth, and other times I just don't want to risk it. I don't know if we'll even be worth fighting with my dad. I guess I won't know until... Until you leave for school, she finishes. Yep. I forego telling her about what Spencer said because I don't know what to make of it yet. I don't know if I should take his word for it so soon. I want to, but I also don't want to get hurt over nothing. Do you think you guys will... tonight? She wiggles her brow, and I wave her off. Anna, leave me be, I giggle. She still pesters me about it until I leave, but I feel half better about the date, more excited than before. Spencer makes me way too happy, way too soon. 
but there doesn't seem to be anything I can do about it now. Chapter 11. Spencer. I get home to Roland questioning me about where I was, which pisses me off because we agreed he wouldn't bother me if I lived here. But I have enough cash saved up to finally get out of here soon. I just need to find a place. Where have you been? He walks into the kitchen in his boxers. I wasn't out getting laid like you. I chuckle, grabbing a flavored drink from the fridge. Fuck off. He turns on the light and sits on the counter. Tank, keep you late? I shake my head. No, I did drive Janine back to the shop, though. That's where I was, I tell him. He gives me the same crazy look that Logan did. Wow. She cleared it with her dad. Don't worry about me. I'm not. We agreed I wouldn't helicopter you. He laughs. I drink from the bottle and give him a funny look. Why are you waiting up for me anyway? I ask. I wanted to finish our conversation. There is no conversation. That's what I wanted to tell you. Look, I know you've been telling the other guys about me. I'd appreciate it if you didn't, I tell him. He nods in response and doesn't bother arguing. Good night, I sing, walking back up to my room. When I'm alone, my permanent state of being half-hard thinking about Janine comes back. I strip and get in the shower. Cold water doesn't even help. Kissing her feels better than sex, and for me, that's a first. All I want to do is kiss her, explore her body any way I can. She's so damn sexy, it doesn't make any sense in that cute and unseeming way. She tries to hide it, but she has to know how beautiful she is. It doesn't make sense. That long curly hair of hers, round ass and hips, it's fucking torture. Her sweet lips and soft body run through my mind as I stroke myself in the shower until I come, thinking of her the whole time. It took everything I had not to keep going in that car. I didn't stop because I didn't want to, but because it just felt like she was better than doing it in the back seat of her car. I'm not sure how tonight will go, but I am almost certain we're on the same page. I think about texting her before I go to sleep, but I don't know if that seems clingy. I don't want to freak her out and push her away, acting like a crazy dude. But I want her to know how I feel about her. I'm pretty sure I told her, but that could still be here and her there. Fuck, I'm in trouble. The next morning, I wake up and go for a run, getting my frustration out on the pavement and such. I wake up thinking about Janine, and it's not the best thing, because I just want to see her and have a half a mind to go to her house. Everyone knows where Tank lives. But I didn't do that. I can't do that. So I run and then lift spare weights in the garage until I am all but spent. I don't expect a call from Tank when I get it, so my mind runs off to the worst possible scenarios. Spencer, I answer the phone, sitting on the steps of the garage. Can you go by the shop today? We have a shipment coming in, he asks. And I breathe a sigh of relief at that being the reason he called. Uh, sure, I scratch behind my head. I was hoping to meet with Janine earlier, but I can't really do that since the shop closes at four. Thanks. I stay on the line because he doesn't sound like he's finished. The two of us don't really talk much, not directly. In fact, the only one he talks to more is my brother, his vice pres. The fact that he is calling me is way out of the ordinary, and why, I assume, the worst. But I guess that comes from doing something I'm technically not supposed to be doing with Janine. You were with my daughter last night. I swallow hard. I guess, since I don't know what she might have told him, but I doubt she told him the truth. She would have warned me, I hope. I was. I laugh once, what I usually do. I don't want to start acting weird. The other few times we spoke, I was making jokes when I wasn't supposed to. He told me to be more serious about the club, so I toned it down. But that's just how I am. Playful, jokes for days. Most of the time it works, but he doesn't sound all that happy. I don't let just anyone be alone with her. You know that, right? His voice is stern. Well, I'm pretty new around here, so I guess I don't know. Which is mostly true. 
It's not like he told me himself. Hearing things through the grapevine can get messed up. Who knows? Now you do. She's going to be helping out at the shop while she's here, so I'm counting on you to look out for her. I frown. Look out for her? From what? He really must have no idea, which is good, considering how bad it might be if he does. From bad shit. That happens around here. You're good at keeping an eye out for things, so I've heard. I internally curse Roland for telling people my business like that, but there's nothing I can do about it now. Uh, sure thing, Tank. I rub at my eyes. I feel like I'm lying, but I already planned on keeping an eye out for her anyway. Problem is, he's trusting me with something now, asking for my help, and if he finds out what I've really been doing, it would be like betraying his trust, which is a no-go at the club. Damn, as if things could get any harder. Good, he says, and hangs up right after. I swallow hard, staring at my phone like it did me wrong. Back in the house, I eat and shower and force myself not to do what I did last time. When I first got her number and then didn't call because I remembered who her dad is. Now he trusts me with something and I don't want to fuck up my place at the club. Because now I'm deliberately going behind his back. It takes until the afternoon when I get my nerve back and how I feel about Janine wins. I call her up and think she is about to miss the call. Hello, she eventually answers, sounding like she's panting. I smile at hearing her voice, imagining it in a different light. Why are you breathing like that? I ask her, smiling. I change the channel to a reality TV show. Roland always dogs me for watching them, calls me a chick. But I don't care. The drama is entertaining. Um, I was with my dad when the phone rang. I hear her smiling on the other end and picture it in my head. I love when she smiles, when she's happy. I want her to stay that way, and the fact that I play a role in it makes me happy too. A little worried, but happy nonetheless. Oh, shit, sorry. I freak out. He called me hours ago, but I had to wait a while. Now I'm just trying not to tell her that he called. I don't want her to possibly cancel the date out of fear, and I'm prepared to do everything to ensure that she doesn't. She giggles her soft laugh. That's okay. I'm glad you called. I grin and laugh. Yeah, me too. Sorry I called so late. I don't really wake up early. It's partially true, but in this case, I was just being a jerk. I tell myself now that I'm going to text her every morning so that I'm the first thing on her mind because she's the first thing on mine. I can understand that. What are you doing? She perks her voice up. I hear the smile in it again, and I'm glad she's happy just to be talking to me. I'm eating cold pizza on the couch, I tell her, dropping the crust back onto the box. We seem to always have leftover pizza in the fridge. Ew, she giggles. It's better cold, I promise, and watching trash TV, I grin. That's the best TV. I just had breakfast, a real one, she teases me. I was going to sit around all day until Tank called me and said I have to go into the shop for a while. I sigh finding it hard to keep the rest of that conversation at bay. Oh, that sucks, she says, not sounding like she really means it. Yeah, not really. It's something to do. But I was hoping to pick you up around six, I tell her. That sounds great. Except... Or maybe we can meet up. I curse under my breath. I hadn't even thought of that. Maybe it will be easier anyway with both of us working at the club and Tank asking me to look out for her. Maybe it can work out for us, but I would rather tell her in person. Yeah, that sounds good. She sighs, and it sounds like the sad kind, which I don't like at all. I can't wait to see you, I tell her. Maybe next time I can plan on picking her up when her dad is gone or something, but we'll just have to figure that out. Me too, she says. Roland walks in the front door, slamming it. I've been told you're a babysitter now. I swat at him and tell Janine I have to go before she hears anything. He walks around and sits next to me on the couch, in his cut and jeans that tell me he was at the club. He grabs a slice of pizza and talks with his mouth full. What the fuck are you talking about, man? I half ignore him and watch the fake fight playing out on TV.
Chicks are ruthless. Tank told me he asked you to look out for Janine. I told him I'd make sure that you would. I roll my eyes and grow angry. Great. You sound upset. I frown at him, partially because I can't tell him what has been going on. I don't want to ask him to lie to Tank. That wouldn't be fair. Yeah, I am. The way he packs people around her like she's a porcelain doll. She's a person, you know? I lash out. I wish I could have said it to Tank, to his face. But for obvious reasons, I couldn't. Roland will just have to do. Wow, someone's involved. <sighs> I'm not. I calm down. I'm not involved. It's just unfair is all I'm saying. But don't worry. I'll watch her. Like a fucking hawk. I fake a smile that he sees right through. He nudges my arm and shakes his head. Thanks. I know he doesn't want to actually tell me not to make him look bad, and I don't make him. He pesters me on the couch for a while. I guess it's not so much a pester as him just sitting there, but still, I'm pissed at him for telling my life story to everyone. When he finally leaves me alone, though, and I get back from the shop, I start getting ready for my date. I just hope she likes where I plan on taking her. I've gotten into the habit of wearing my cut everywhere, so I put that over a shirt that buttons up, a rarity for me, and jeans that don't have any wear or tear in them. I don't think I've ever gotten dressed up for a girl before, let alone go on a date. I text her to meet me at the shop. It seems like a reasonable spot that is easy to explain if we're seen there. I get there before her, parking my bike in the back like I told her to. After a few minutes, I see her pull up, and I smile instantly. She gets out, waving to me, and I lean against my bike, watching her like I don't know how to look anywhere else. She has on a pair of jeans that wraps her legs perfectly, a top with thin straps that's all frilly, like her. I like how her curly hair is out and free, not tied back at all. Under the setting sun, she looks unreal. Hi! She steps up to me. I push off the bike and close the gap, inhaling her sweet scent. She has pink lip gloss lightly on her lips, and I don't know enough to know if she wears makeup or not, but her skin always looks smooth, her cheeks blushed and rosy. Hey, Angel, you look amazing. I slide my hands around her waist and pull her in close, grinning at her. She smiles back at me, and I kiss her lightly, tasting her mint and gloss. Thanks she says once I break the kiss. You clean up nice. She presses her hands to my chest. Her warmth against my chest feels nice. I try. You ready to go? I take her hand, kissing her wrist. Yeah, where are we going? It's a surprise. I put her helmet on for her, and then we get on the bike. The place I'm taking her to isn't far, but it is far enough that people in town may not recognize us. My bike won't draw suspicion in a place like this. It's more of a college town, so there are curious creatures around anyway. This place looks fancy, she says when we start walking in the place. It's just a front, I tell her, which is partially true. I only know about this place because I googled it. I really googled a good place to take her. I'm so far deep it isn't even funny. The hostess seats us, and I hold her hand the whole way there feeling fully seated in the date role now. We got a booth, which she seems happy about. You like booths? I ask her. She slides in and adjusts the strap of her shirt, tossing her hair over her shoulder. Yeah, they're the only way to sit and eat in a restaurant. She giggles. I smile at how cute she is. I'm starving. She lifts the menu and starts looking it over. You seem to always be hungry. I chuckle. I glance over the menu, probably going to get a steak or something simple. The server comes, a chick who seems like she's in college here and who can't stop staring at me to get our drink orders. I get a beer and Janine gets lemonade. Is that your favorite drink or something? I ask. Yeah, pretty much. So you don't drink? I ask her. She giggles. Well, <laughs> I'm not 21. I lean forward. Wait, how old are you? I realize I don't really know. I mean, I took a guess. Twenty. You? Thirty. I lie, chuckling. 
She shakes her head at me and laughs. Well, obviously, you're old enough to drink, legally. Twenty-two, prime age. It is. How much older is your brother? She asks. Five years. I sigh. He was like the dad sometimes, which I know he hates, but it was true. We order, I get the steak like I suspected, and she gets a seafood thing. That's what the place is actually known for, since we aren't that far from the coast. So, um, I start carefully, watching her sip her lemonade. Your dad called me this morning, I say. She coughs up her drink and stares at me wide-eyed. I laugh at the way she just freaked out, but I'm still nervous about it. I take her hand and trace the inside of her wrist with my fingers. <laughs> Why? She wipes the corners of her mouth and leans in. I half smile. He, um, he asked me to look out for you. Look out for me? <laughs> what the hell? She giggles in shock. Um, that's what I thought. He said since we work at the shop together, sometimes that I could. Holy crap! She rests her head on her hand. Yeah, he started with being all weird about us leaving together last night. At first, I thought you told him something. She laughs. God, no, I'd never tell... I mean, that I wouldn't say anything unless you knew I was, she corrects. I nod once. Uh-huh. Sorry. She chews the inside of her cheek, and I watch her silently freak out. It's fine. Except I told him that I would, and now I feel like I'm directly lying to him. Which I know isn't your problem. I'm not saying I don't want to do this. I'm just saying that's how much I want to. And I hope you know that. She beams, smiling wide, and I feel better immediately. I know that. Our food arrives, and we talk as we eat. I ask her about school and stuff. She tells me more about growing up in two places and stuff and a crazy best friend who lent her that outfit. It looks amazing on her, and the fact that she wanted to look special for me makes me feel great, like I have some sort of responsibility. You don't want dessert? I ask her. She cleaned her plate, but I never know if she's still hungry. No, I'm officially full. That was amazing. I didn't even know this place was here, and I've lived here forever. My knee nudges hers on purpose. I searched it up on the internet. She beams again, her cheeks blushing that bright color again. I can't believe you searched up a place for us. That's so sweet. I'm a sweet guy. Don't sound so surprised. I chuckle. I'm not. Thank you. No one has ever done something like that for me before, she says. And I'm left wondering why every other guy she has met is a total asshole. I'm happy to do it. You ready for part two? I paid the bill and did math in my head for the tip. Part two? She grabs her purse and we get up. I lead her with my hand at her waist and we walk outside. Yep, the second part. I chuckle, leaving her in the dark. She purses her lips at me. I kiss her before we get on the bike and she grins at me widely. I drive the few miles to the place I saw on Google Maps. It's a lakeside creek that looks secluded. There's a gazebo-type thing in the field by the stretch of water. It's nice if people are into nature. This is so beautiful. You search this place, too? She giggles, walking out in front of me to explore. I smile to myself. Yes, this was all me. I follow her to the gazebo that I already set up before I went to get her. You did all this? She looks around at the blankets set up on the floor, facing the quiet water and trees. I step close to her. You said you like being outdoors sometimes. I answer. She said it in passing, but still. She smiles up at me, as if shocked that I was listening in the first place. Thank you. She wraps her arms around my waist, pulling herself close to me. I smile and hold her close, too. Anything for you, Angel. I lean in and hover my lips over hers, before her eyes flutter closed and she kisses me. Her lips are always so soft, it's effortless to kiss her because it just feels right. 
I deepen it immediately, my tongue swiping over her lips and swirling with hers when she lets me in. I spread my hands over her hips and squeeze her ass. She moans against my mouth and grips me tighter. Things move so fast, my head nearly spins, but I keep going. She kisses me back hard, her fingers lading up in my hair and holding me in close. I turn my head and lift her, moving us to the blanket. It's so soft I barely feel the ground. She sheds my jacket and trails her hand down my arms and across my front. She toys at my buttons but doesn't undo them. I keep kissing her until we need air. I smooth my lips over the blush by her ear before I pull back. Her smile is soft, her eyes boring into mine as I grin back. Spencer, I... She breaks off, her chest heaving with her breath. I lick my lips. We don't have to, Janine. I grin at her. She shakes her head. I want to. She leans in and kisses me. I kiss her back as she wraps her legs around me, too. I'm losing a lot of self-control the further this goes along, but I'll take her word for it. I didn't think I was a sex-on-the-first-date kind of girl. She giggles against me. Technically, it's the second. Chapter 12. Janine I was surprised Spencer did all this for our date. I mean, I hoped it would live up to my expectations of a first date. In fact, it surpassed them. He was as sweet as I thought he would be, if not more. It's why I found it so much easier to fully give in to him. If it was any other guy, I wouldn't be laying down outside under the sunset, ready to go all the way with him. I giggle at thinking of it like that, but it really is what is happening. He looms over me, his warm scent and killer smile taking over. But I know that I am thinking clearly about how much I want this. I kiss him back, eagerly hoping he doesn't think differently of me. I know he thinks I am some innocent girl, heavily guarded, but I don't want to be. At least not anymore. Not with him. How is the second date? I ask him between kisses. He feigns thinking, his brow shuffling. He licks his lips and grins at me. I only said second to make you feel better, but technically we can count our drive-in dinner. He chuckles. I smile at him, even trying to make me feel better at all. Whatever, I don't care. I wrap my arms around his neck and kiss him back sliding my tongue against his lips. His body is pressing tightly to mine, and his lips are so warm it doesn't make sense. Soft, too. Even as he kisses me harder, I get past my nerves and start undoing his shirt, sliding my fingers between each button as I go along. His chest is hard from muscle. Warmth floods my fingers as I feel his heartbeat over mine. I know it should feel weird, undressing him, but it doesn't. Not even a little. My heartbeat turns erratic when his hands come up under my shirt and rub my bare skin. Even the parts of me that I don't necessarily like, he doesn't seem to care about. Between kisses, he lifts me up and takes my shirt off. The weather isn't cold at all, but I shiver from the excitement. His eyes rove over my skin. The strapless bra I wore sits low on my chest, pushing up my breasts. He runs his fingertips over the curve, pressing against my skin. Then he moves down to the buttons of my jeans, undoing them and sliding them off. My blue panties match my bra, and he gazes at me like it's the first time he's seen me. What? I ask nervously. He shakes his head once. Nothing. You're just so gorgeous. He smiles at me, and it's so genuine I lose myself in it. Thanks. I don't really know what else to say, but that seems good enough. He laughs at me and lays his body back over mine, kissing me again. I take his shirt off, trailing my hands down the hard muscles of his arms, reveling in how good he feels. He is so undeniably sexy, it doesn't make sense that he would want me, but he does. Clearly, from the feeling of him pressed against my inner thigh. My heart patters again, flying up into my throat. He breaks the kiss, his lips trailing down my jaw and against my ear. 
I try to undo his jeans, but my fingers fumble so much it takes forever. I laugh to myself, and he lifts off me to kick them off with his shoes. I run my bare feet over his calves as he continues to kiss my neck, finding this spot that makes me mule. Right below my ear, his tongue suckles the skin and starts making a hickey I know will be there for days. His warm hands slide down my back, undoing my bra strap. My breath hitches, but I force the discomfort away as soon as it starts to feel good. His chest against my bare breasts is warm and hard. My nipples rub against him and start to harden even more. He continues working at my neck. His other hand slides down my body and flitters across my panties, and I start to really come alive down there. Spencer, I gasp, turning to him. Hmm? He starts kissing down my neck, trailing over my breasts. When he closes his mouth around my nipple, flicking his tongue against me, I shiver with the new feeling. It's not like touching myself at all. I feel new things as he continues and alternates between them both. That feels nice. I giggle. He chuckles once, continuing. He kisses down my navel, too, and I focus on the blocks of wood on the ceiling instead of watching him do that. My panties slip away, and he smooths his hands down my legs before coming back up. His hands close around my inner thigh and push them apart. His warm breath hits my swollen clit, and I moan aloud. Look at me, angel, he murmurs against my inner thigh. I take a deep breath, then look down to find his intense eyes looming at me. After a second, I just look in his eyes, and all my self-consciousness goes away. I just look at him and know that it's going to be okay, that it's perfect. I smile, and he presses an open kiss to me, his tongue following after. Oh, God, I cry out, latching my fingers in his hair. That sensation is so new, so different, his mouth on me like this. I've never done anything like this with anyone, and I'm glad that he is my first in that regard. The others just went straight to condoms and penetration. Now he is offering me pleasure and focusing on only me. Spencer, don't stop. Oh, my God. I start to lose it when his tongue flicks faster and he suckles my folds against his lips. He groans against me, the vibrations running through my body. I clutch his hair harder, my thighs trapping him in, and I know that I am so close I can taste it. He doesn't stop, not even a little. I start to feel my climax running up inside me, stretching all over my body and pooling right at my center. I get so wet I can't believe it, but he drinks all of me up like he's the hungriest man on earth. Hungry for me. Holy hell, Spencer, that was amazing. I breathe heavily. His lips leave me and travel back up my body, the wetness making me cold to the air. I'm completely naked, and he still has his boxers on, so I feel overexposed. I reach for them and watch as he kicks them off. My eyes widen at his cock. It's hard and huge, the biggest I've ever seen, and hangs heavily between his legs, a groomed area of dark hair. My eyes are up here, Angel. He chuckles, wiping around his mouth. I grin at him and pull him close, kissing him. I can almost taste myself on him, and it sends excitement down my spine, pooling at my center again. My pussy gets so wet, I feel it dripping. He kisses me harder, his tongue swirling over mine. His hands slide down my body and stop at my clit, rubbing against me. I moan against him, already on the edge again. He slides two fingers into me, curling upward. I rake my nails down his back from the feeling digging in when he adds another finger and stretches me wide. Spencer, please, I need you. My desire starts to speak for me, and I barely recognize myself, but I'm not really complaining. I'm getting you ready, Angel, he murmurs against my lips, smiling. I grin back. That's a bit arrogant, isn't it? I giggle. He pumps me with his fingers again, and my laughs die down to moans of want and need for him. I mule with disapproval when he leaves me entirely, 
starts digging in his jacket. He reappears with a gold-wrapped condom and smirks at me. Kneeling between my legs, he rolls the condom on, and I watch with rapt attention. You were prepared for this, I comment. He looks at me passively, his eyes more attuned to the rest of me. I hoped for this. Me too. I giggle again, staring at him. He leans back over me and cups my breasts with his hands, kneading the heavy flesh. I used to feel self-conscious about them being bigger than the other girls, but not now. The way he's touching me, his cock lays against my clit, rubbing between my folds. He groans, his eyelids fluttering closed as he continues. He opens them only to look at my breasts as he rolls them together, suckling the flesh and leaving marks for sure. Can I say these are my favorite part of you? Absolute favorite. He kisses me again, harder, and with more passion than ever. It takes over me so much I hardly notice when he starts to enter me. I feel it when he is fully inside me. He is bigger than he seems, and it stings like it's the first time at first. Yes, you can. I moan when he is fully seethed inside of me. He grips my hips harder as I wrap my legs around him, opening myself up to him. It feels better than I could have imagined. His body against mine is perfect, like it belongs there. I feel connected to him on a bigger level, and I don't know why, but I know that I don't want to fight it. He pulls back to look at me, right in my eyes, and I beam at how happy I am in this moment. And then he starts to move. Oh, God, he moves, and it feels amazing. He fills me up so completely, and it feels so undeniably good, I disappear to a place that only has us. The warm air cocoons around us, the energy we exert sheening our bodies with sweat as we writhe together. I lift up my hips and meet him thrust for thrust, feeling his body closer to mine with every step. He holds me so close there is no space between us, and it does feel like more than sex with him. Fuck, Angel, you're so tight. Feels so fucking good. He kisses me, his tongue swirling around mine, and I kiss him back hard. I clench around him as I feel myself close. He moves one hand to hold my breast again, resting there as they bob with his thrusts. My body has a mind of its own, falling into another orgasm before I can even see it coming. He moves into me harder and faster, really starting to fuck me and I feel myself close to another one. Somewhere in all that, he still focuses on me somehow, circling my clit with his thumb to bring me to another one. This time we come together, and it's the most delicious thing ever, us coming together. He clenches his arms around me so tight I feel every tendon of his muscles clenching around me, and I feel his cock twitching as he comes, the heat of it through the condom as he buries himself inside me. I kiss him again. This time it's slow and soft pressed, just us feeling each other move. He slips out of me, and I moan from the loss, my body starting to calm itself down, but it felt so good. I don't know how I could ever relive it, except to do it over and over again. This man might have made me an addict for him. You okay? He whispers, cupping my face with his other hand. I touch my hand over his and nod, smiling up at him. His face is flushed, hair messier than before, and lips colored. He looks absolutely edible. I nod at him, confirming silently. How many of those condoms did you bring? Chapter 13 Spencer I'm certain I've turned Janine into a sex addict, but I don't think I care. She felt so good my brain is practically mush now. I haven't been with anyone like this before, that it felt like more than sex. I'm falling for her already, and I don't know what to think about it yet. Only that I don't necessarily mind. I might have more than one, I answer her, kissing her below her ear. But I'm a man. I need time, you know. I chuckle. She rolls out from under me, and we reposition so she is half laying on my chest. I move one of the spare blankets over us as she sighs. 
Yes, I know, from movies and stuff. She giggles. I kiss the top of her head, inhaling the sweet scent of her shampoo. From movies? I chuckle. Yeah, from movies. That's as far as my experience goes. But I thought... I tilt her head to look at me, and she nods. My first time lasted less than a minute. I'm choosing not to count it sometimes. She smiles sadly. Well, that's just disappointing, I answer. But glad I made it last a hell of a lot longer than a minute. It's a practiced skill. It was. But this was nice. Just nice? I tease her. She lifts her chin on my chest, her other hand toying with my hair. That's all I can come up with for now. My brain is fried. She snuggles up against me, her breasts mashing to my chest, and I feel my body reacting to hers already again. I hate to ruin the moment, I start after a while, and she looks up at me with her big brown eyes. But do you have a curfew or anything? I ask her. She giggles and gives me a funny look. I don't really have a curfew. I don't get into trouble, so my dad doesn't really worry about me that much, if I'm getting into trouble or not. But he might ask where I am if it gets too late, she explains. Hmm. Okay. Why? Is there another part to this date or something? She asks. I shake my head and laugh. No, but you did ask about condoms. I reach for my jacket and pull another one out. She sits up and gives me her look of desire. Her cheeks flush in that same way. She purses her lips as they part when she breathes deeper. I did. She bites her lip and I guide her over me. She straddles my lap, the heat of her pussy above my budding cock. I smile at her, kissing her again. She rubs against me and I get fully hard. I might be permanently hard around her from now on. I kiss her deeper, moving down to knead her breasts. I really fucking love them, so soft and round. Even in comparison to her fleshy ass, it takes the cake. I could suck on her rosy, pebbled nipples all day, but I only have most of tonight. I roll the condom on my cock, grab myself at the base, and rub myself over her pussy. She moans as she starts to drip more. I use my other hand to dip my fingers inside her, stretching her for me. She is unbelievably tight. I felt like I was going to explode as soon as I was in her the first time. Spencer... She moans, breaking the kiss. I look at her as she rocks back onto her ass, my cock resting against her pussy. I grip her hips and guide them over me, able to tell she hasn't done this before. Just relax. I got you. I grin at her. She nods once, looking down at where we meet. She sits onto my cock, slowly. Each inch hits me further, and I shudder at how good she feels. My fingers dig into her hips as she fully sits on me. I don't even have to guide her anymore. She takes over. Her nails rake down my front, stopping at my abs as she holds her hands there, rocking her hips back and forth until she adjusts. Oh my God, that's deep. She bites her lip, rocking back again as she raises up a bit. Yeah, I groan. She breathes deeper her breasts swaying as she moves. I watch her take over, like some sort of vixen using my body for her pleasure, and I don't even mind it. I'm along for the ride as much as she is, and she really starts to ride my cock. I lose myself in her moans at how loud she is. There's no one around for miles, and I'm glad that we are alone. I raise my hips to meet her, our skin clapping together in the wide silence of the forest. It's all so romantic I could scream. If it were anyone else, I probably would. But it's not. It's Janine. And she means so much to me I would do anything. And it's not just the way her pussy is wrapped around my cock right now. It's everything else. Fuck, Angel. I'm gonna come soon. I warn her. She moves faster anyway. I circle her clip with my thumb and she erupts in seconds. Now she's just a bundle of orgasms, it seems, and I'm all here for it. She looks absolutely gorgeous when she comes. Her skin seems to glow and her body quivers around me. 
I hold her close to me and let myself go, coming even harder than before. My cock twitches inside her as I empty myself, groaning against her lips when she kisses me. Spencer, you've made me crazy, she whispers against my ear, rolling off me. I laugh and discard the condom. I could say the same. I hold her close to me as we relax together, just enjoying the feel of each other. I don't think I have ever just laid with another person like this, and it feels good. We aren't even talking, just relishing the company of each other. How do you plan on topping this for our next date? She asked me. I smile and look down at her. I guess I haven't figured that out yet. You don't really need to do anything that special, I mean. I would be happy with eating fast food from a drive through on the back seat of a truck or something, she says, like it's nothing. I'm shocked, but you deserve something special every once in a while. She nods. Okay, every once in a while then, she agrees. I smile and kiss the top of her head, holding her close. She starts to shiver, and I figure we should get going, and I'm trying not to doze off. We should get out of here. I say, reluctantly sitting up. Yeah, she nods in agreement. You okay? I ask her. I don't know why I'm worried about her. I guess it's not so much worried that I feel like I need to check on her. Yeah, I'm fine. Why do you keep asking me that? She smiles softly. I glance at her and grin. I don't know. I just feel like I should. I get distracted by her putting her panties on as she sits and reaching for her bra. That's sweet of you, but you don't have to, she says. I stand and put my jeans back on, button up my shirt. She gets dressed and does the same. Are you leaving this here? She asks about the blankets. It's gotten much darker. I can only see her with the reflection of the moonlight. It makes her brown hair look a little lighter, the curls popping even more. Yeah, I guess, until I come back to get it in the morning, I tell her. That's what I did to get the stuff here. I came earlier, I tell her. She nods once. Thank you for doing this. She walks up to me, wrapping her arms around my waist. I hug her back and smile. It was really special, she adds. I nod once, pushing her hair back over her brow. No problem. You deserve to feel special, Janine, I say. Her eyes light up as if she's never heard that before, and I don't think she has. You make me feel special, just you. She reaches up on her tiptoes and kisses me softly. Her lips against mine feel like heaven, no matter how many times I feel them against me. I'm glad, I tell her. We get going after that. The feeling of her pressed against me on the back of my bike is one I haven't even gotten used to yet. She's warm and soft, everything that I'm not, and I just want to keep her that way. I'm worried that I will taint her in some way, that I'm going to mess her up, but I try not to think that way, because then I will pull back like I always do, letting fear make the decisions for me. She deserves better than that, and I just want to give her the best of myself. As soon as I find it, it's hers. Chapter 14 Janine I wish I could freeze this moment in time with Spencer, but I know that I can't. I could try, try to freeze the moment he comes inside me, the moments he holds me, kisses me. But it would all be in vain because it would never measure up to the real thing. Being with Spencer feels too good, way too soon. And that scares me, but the thought of not having him is a little scarier. Which is good, because I don't want to pull back from him just yet. The second time around is even better than the first. I am almost completely in tune with him now, and I don't feel self-conscious at all. Being on top is a little different, but once I got the hang of it, that was definitely better. He has a rocking body, and an even better cock. Spencer, you've made me crazy, I whisper rolling off him. I feel the loss of his cock inside me and clench around nothing. The searing heat of him lingers inside me, and I revel in the sensation. My whole body is heated up by him, all over. I feel like I might explode. I could say the same. He laughs, 
The boom of his laughter vibrates against my body. I watch with hanging eyes as he discards the condom, his now flaccid cock laying against his leg. I clear my throat and try to focus on something else, like how pretty the trees are, how peaceful the field is. I don't know how he found this place, but it's perfect. He holds me close to him, his muscular arms wrapped around me tightly. My body presses to his, and my breasts mash against his chest. For some reason, that makes me feel more like a woman, especially the way he touches them. I believe him completely when he says they're his favorite. We lay there for a while, just enjoying the feel of each other. I haven't ever done that with a guy, cuddled, and it feels nice. How do you plan on topping this for our next date? I break the silence. This one set the bar really high. Fancy dinner, picnic in the woods. It has all been very romantic. I guess I haven't figured that out yet. He looks down at me with thoughts in his eyes, and I realize he is actually thinking about it. I don't want him to think he has to go above and beyond for me. I'm not that kind of girl. I don't need to be showered and pampered with gifts. It really isn't my thing. You don't really need to do anything special, I mean. I would be happy with eating fast food from a drive through in the back seat of a truck or something, I tell him, and I really mean it. That night we spent at the drive-in and then sat in my car it was perfect. I felt like I didn't need to try and be something else. Not that I felt like that tonight. It was perfect tonight. But I'm not the one to stress over my outfit and hair. I tried to do my eye makeup and ended up wiping it off anyway. No one has energy for all that. I'm shocked, but you deserve something special every once in a while, he says. His deep voice seeps into my skin, and I smile to myself at it. He's just such a man. I don't know how to explain it. It's not the muscles or his scent. It's just how he acts. I've only been around boys before. Spencer is not like that at all. I nod at him. Okay, every once in a while then. I agree only to make him happy. He seems like I'd have to argue with him and end up losing. He grins at me and kisses the top of my head. I beam. That head kiss is just so simple and sweet. It means nothing other than I care about you. I enjoy it way too much. We should get out of here, he says like he half means it. But he's right. It's getting chilly, and although my dad won't pester me about where I was, I don't want to give him a reason to. Yeah, I agree. You okay? He asks me again. I'm not sure why he does that. I think it's sweet, but it makes me feel like I've done something to make him think that I'm not okay. I start trying to find my clothes, but it has gotten darker, and that makes it a bit hard. Yeah, I'm fine. Why do you keep asking me that? I smile at him, and he turns sheepish. He half looks at me and smiles. I don't know. I just feel like I should. I feel him watching me as I put on my panties and bra. He watches me get dressed like I'm getting undressed. It's different. Kind of nice. That's sweet of you, but you don't have to, I tell him. I'm not a delicate flower like everyone at the club treats me. Spencer is the only one that doesn't do that. <laughs> Until now, I guess. Noted. He stands up and puts his jeans on. I get up, too, to put the rest of my clothes back on. I wonder if there are any bugs for a second and shake it off. The place looks rather clean. I'll still be taking a shower as soon as I get home. Are you leaving this here? I wonder aloud about the blankets. They're so warm and plush. I half wonder where he got them, too. He stands a few feet away and gazes at me in that way again. Yeah, I guess, until I come back to get it in the morning. That's what I did to get the stuff here. I came earlier, he says. I nod, but keep thinking how unbelievably sweet this man is. It doesn't make sense. I never would have thought, but here he is. And it doesn't feel like he's faking. Thank you for doing this. I walk up to him and hug him, craning my neck up to look at him. I inhale his scent and feel his warmth against me. It's too perfect. It was really special, I tell him. He nods and pushes my hair back over my shoulder. His hand presses heavily to my face until he pulls back. His eyes bore into mine, carrying this intensity that I can't place. 
I can only get lost in it. No problem. You deserve to feel special, Janine, he tells me. The intensity in his voice runs through my body, and I beam. You make me feel special, just you. I reach up and kiss him before I can think about what I just said. I know that I meant it, but it feels too serious to actually say it out loud. The kiss stays soft as he coaxes his lips against mine, kissing me just for the sake of kissing me. I'm glad, he says, when we break apart. I smile to myself, and we get going shortly after. I haven't gotten used to riding on his bike yet, the holding him close and pressing my body to his part. I just hold him tightly and inhale his scent against the whipping wind, feeling free. It has been such a perfect night that I don't want it to end, and I wish it didn't have to. But good things should be done in moderation, too. We arrive back at the shop, and he parks near my car. You want an escort home? He asks me, taking off my helmet. I laugh at him. No, that's okay. Besides... I start thinking of my dad and trail off. His smile drops for a second before it falls back in line. Right. You have a good time? He trails his fingertips down my chin and then cups my face. Yes, an amazing time. Thank you, I tell him again, moving closer to him. You're welcome. He kisses me softly. I sigh and figure if I don't tell him, I'll just think about it all night. I'm not fragile, Spencer. I know everyone at the club thinks I am because my dad makes me out to be that way, but I'm not. You're the first guy to see me, despite what he says, and I'm glad that you did. But I... I'm not fragile. I like having sex with you. You don't have to ask me if I'm okay all the time. I laugh softly. He grins in turn, and I relax a little. Okay, Janine, you're not fragile, and I don't pay attention to what the other guys say. I nod and laugh once. Okay, Spencer. I unlock my car and open the door. I'll call you tomorrow, he tells me. Okay. Good night. I wave to him. He smiles and watches me drive off before he leaves. I smile all the way there, a little relieved that Dad's bike isn't here. It would be weird walking in post-date and gazebo sex without it seeming obvious. Dad is intuitive that way. Like I knew I would, though, I strip and shower immediately, feeling sad about washing his touch away, but I know that's permanent. I look in the mirror as I wrap my towel around myself, confirming I have a huge hickey on my neck under my ear, and more above my breasts. He literally ate me up. I decide to go all out and send him a picture, asking how the hell am I going to hide these. When I put my nightshirt on and climb into bed, he responds. Spencer, use that sexy hair of yours to cover it. I giggle. That doesn't seem plausible at all. But I used to think my curly hair was annoying, and now he tells me it's sexy. I'll never think about getting a perm again. Me. Hmm, I'll try that. Have you gone to bed yet? Spencer, is that a request for a pic? I smile and bite my lip, rolling over in bed. My body is completely spent. I can't even think about doing something other than sleep, but a pick for the road would be nice. Me. I guess I am. I take the leap. This is new to me, too, but with Spencer, it just feels normal. A few moments later, he sends me a picture from the neck down. His abs are taut as he lays in bed against gray sheets, dipped low on his waist, under his Adonis belt, and right above his cock. God, he is way too hot. Me. Good enough. Good night. Spencer. Good night, Angel. He sends with a wink, and I grin. Now I can fall asleep. When I wake up the next morning, I didn't think I would feel any different, but I do. I feel like a different person, and it's all Spencer's fault. Not that I'm mad or anything, I just hope he's as messed up as I am. I roll over in bed, a huge smile on my face as I stretch out. I didn't wake up early again, which is nice, and my dad isn't pestering me about it either. But it's Sunday now, and he usually tries to relax at least a little bit, but I can't make any promises for him. I check my phone before I get out of bed, yawning as my eyes water. I end up rereading our text messages and staring at his photo like it's the best work of art. 
It pretty much is. I can't believe I sent him a photo, too. I never do that kind of thing. I'm not worried about it getting out or anything. This isn't high school. But it's kind of hot, knowing he can look at it any time he wants to. As I'm staring intently, Adriana texts me, asking to meet up for lunch. And I agree. Eventually, I get up and shower, half waiting for a text from Spencer. I figured he would text me first, but I don't mind all that chivalrous type stuff anyway. I go through my morning routine, shower, and dress in jeans and a tee before I head downstairs. Dad? I look around for him and end up finding him outside in the backyard again. He's wearing jeans and no shirt. You're going to get sunburned, Dad, I tell him. He grins at me, dropping a huge chrome part onto the table. I don't need lotion. You slept in late. You let me, which is surprising. I sit across from him and wait for it to feel weird, but it doesn't. Knowing that I'm kind of lying to him, that I'm going behind his back, it doesn't feel good, but he's also unreasonable about it, and I don't really have a choice. I figured you would be tired. You got home late last night. I was home before you. But yeah, I was tired. I'm going to lunch with Adriana, I tell him. Oh, you guys are still friends. That's nice. Bring me back some dessert. He starts paying more attention to the bike part again. Okay, Dad. I grin, getting up from the chair. My phone buzzes, but I don't want to check it in front of him. You need some money? He asks. I laugh once. I'm okay, Dad. I go to hug him goodbye, and he stops me before I leave. Oh, I have some club business to handle. I may be in and out the next few days. I have to go to the next town over, he says. I give him a sour expression, and he sounds like he knows what's coming. Is it dangerous? You sound like your mother. It's a valid question, Dad. I look at him intently. I don't do the dangerous stuff anymore. That's what the other members are for. Dad, I warn I didn't start finding out about some of the stuff he does until I was older, and I kind of wish I hadn't. He gets involved in dangerous stuff sometimes. When I was a bit younger, I could remember what Mom would say to him sometimes about some of the stuff he did. I'm starting to understand more of why she left. Don't worry, Janine. I'll be fine. You have fun, but no house parties. He chuckles. I smile, but it doesn't reach my eyes. Okay, Dad. I hug him again. This time he hangs on a bit longer. It's how I can tell he's keeping some of the truth from me. I leave soon after to meet Adriana at our favorite cafe. She's already sitting at the window, looking effortlessly pretty in a tank top and shorts. Hey! She stands to hug me, and I hug her back. Hey, you ordered already? I ask, sitting in the chair and getting settled. For the first time, I check my phone, and it is a text from Spencer. Spencer, what are you up to, Angel? I smile wide and give myself away. No, but I guess something has your attention. She giggles, trying to look and see. I hide my phone and shake my head at her. Um, not really. I sip the glass of water. Turns out I'm thirsty, and I down nearly the whole thing. Who are you talking to, Spencer? And you never told me how the date was. I calm her down. One thing at a time. The server comes and saves me. We order our usual things, and I get lemonade, which makes me smile even more at the memory. Yes, it's Spencer, and the date was amazing. He really pulled out all the stops. It was romantic and really, really nice. First date worthy? She grins over her glass. Yeah, the best. And I pause to answer Spencer, leaving her and waiting. Me, I'm eating lunch with my friend. Spencer, you have friends? He texts back immediately, and I laugh once. Um, we kind of had sex, too. I sip my lemonade and wait for her to freak out. Her face goes through a bunch of expressions, and I wait for her to land on one. It's prying curiosity. You have to tell me everything. Was it better than the last time? I sure hope so, for your sake, I mean. She laughs. I shake my head at her and nod. Yes, it was better. So much better. I smile at the memory and need to stop thinking about it before it overtakes me. So how did it happen? She pries. I sigh and give her a look. I knew she would do this. I should have prepared better. 
I answer Spencer instead. Me, I do have friends. Well, one friend. Spencer, I'll let you enjoy your lunch date then, Angel. Me, okay, talk later. I set my phone on lock and focus on Adriana, even though I still wish I could run away. He had this picnic thing set up at a gazebo. There was this really nice clearing outside of town. There was moonlight and everything, all very movie-esque. I giggle, almost scoffing at how perfect it was. Oh, that is so romantic. I'm surprised. I mean, he's a, he's a MC guy. Yeah, I guess he isn't really. He only joined for his brother, I tell her. True, I guess. Was he well endowed? She snickers. I shake my head at her and feel myself blushing at the thought. Sure. I play it off. She laughs, knowing I'm being coy about it. It's not that I can't talk about sex. It's just that I haven't fully processed everything yet, and until I do, I don't know how to talk about it. Last night with Spencer was perfect. I could replay every minute of it if I could, but it is, honestly, a blur now. The important moments are there, sure, but most of it is just a fleeting thought I wish I could hold on to. Our food arrives, and I started my salad before eating the sandwich. This place is overly expensive, but the food is good, so we still come by often. Adriana fills me in on her school stuff. Even though it's the summer, she has to plan for next year, and they want to add more readings for the kids' schedule. I don't know anything about education, but that is her forte, so I listen and pretend to offer advice. What about your parents? What happened after they talked? I forget that I text her about everything as it happens, and forget. It's just how we are. We've been friends so long that we can go days without talking and then talk all day every day. I freaked out at first about my parents talking, and I guess I forgot to follow up with her. Oh, not much. They just had the same conversation over again. He asked her to come for Fourth of July, and she hasn't given him an answer yet, I tell her. I still have mixed feelings about the whole thing. All I know is I want her to come down so I can see her. I don't exactly want to be in the middle of their argument again. That's sweet. At last, your dad reached out to her first. That's very chivalrous. Yeah, I guess. I nibble on a stray pepper from my sandwich as she looks at me. Don't you want them to work things out? She asks. Yeah, I do. Sometimes I don't, but for the most part, it would be nice if my life wasn't divided anymore. But it's their life, too, and they can't do it just for me. I'm too old for that. Besides, my mom is right, for the most part. I say again, because there are other parts to consider, where they could just work it out without giving each other ultimatums. I get that, but your parents were so good together. Even I remember them. Plus, they're like the hottest couple around. I spit my water back into the glass, and she laughs at me. I find it in me to laugh, too, but I am still shocked by what the hell she just said. Oh, my God, I do not want to think about my parents that way. I giggle. She shrugs. Well, it's true. Your mom is gorgeous, that's where you get it from, and your dad is the definition of silver fox. I almost throw up in my mouth, but contain myself. He doesn't even have any gray hair. I shake my head, finding it in me to keep eating. I'm starving, despite this weird turn of the conversation. Okay, fair enough, but I am right. You should convince her to come. I nod. I will. Or, I'll try, at least. Now, about Spencer. She leans forward, and I throw a french fry at her. No, we're not doing this. She whines. At least tell me if you like him more, or if you're going to tell your dad. I laugh. <laughs> um, yeah, I like him too much, I think. He likes me too, so at least I'm not alone in that regard. And I guess it just depends on how things go, if I tell my dad. I don't want to get him in trouble. The club seems really important to him. I sigh. The way he told me about his brother makes it seem like the club is important to him, even if it wasn't his idea to join. I don't want to be the one that pushes him out, because I know my dad will be as over the top about it as possible. I don't know if I should be flattered or annoyed. Yeah, but that shouldn't be your responsibility. Spencer seems like a good guy, though, right? I nod. Yeah, he is. I might tell him, but I don't know. I just don't know yet. It's easier to just have fun. And my dad is leaving for a few days anyway. Something about club. 
Oh, awesome. Unless it's dangerous. She changes her voice. I laugh once because I thought that same thing. Time away from my dad would make it easier to sneak around and not worry about being caught all the time. Um, it might be. He wouldn't tell me straight up. He never does. There have only been a few times that I've been around for his club business things, and I never thought about it much back then. Maybe ask Spencer. He might know. I nod, but he's still a new member. Dad still thinks about him as a prospect anyway, so I doubt he might know. Thanks, I tell her. Now I need to tell you about this guy I hooked up with. I laugh at her and listen, anything to get me out of my own thoughts. We finish up at the cafe and I go back home. Dad left already, and I'm not sure when I'll see him again. I call my mom and lounge in the living room for a while, honestly bored. There is only one person that occupies my thoughts now. Chapter 15 Spencer The first thing I think about when I wake up is Janine, which leads to me staring at her photo she sent me long enough for my morning wood to turn into a real hard-on I have to take care of before I even get out of bed. I'm not complaining. I'm happy to have her on my mind. After I go through my morning routine and workout, I text her to see how she is. I'm itching to see her, but I don't want it to seem like I always have to be around her, even if I do feel like that. But she ends up being busy and I have to entertain myself. I don't have to go into the club or the shop today, so my time is my own. The only hobby I have is crossword puzzles or a sudoku. Growing up in foster care, we didn't have many toys or shit to play with, but the paper got dropped off at the door every morning and they piled up so I started doing the crossword games in them, and it stuck. It's one of the only sad stories I have, or kind of sad, anyway. Roland doesn't have them. He tries to pretend he's okay, but I know that he isn't. The guys at the club think they know him, but they don't. It's why it pisses me off that he's told them a bunch of shit about me. My life story isn't really up for grabs. Have you been sitting there all day? Roland comes in, slamming the door behind him. He does some rummaging around in the kitchen, and I don't answer him until he walks in the living room with two beers. He hands me one and gives me a funny look. Not necessarily. Where have you been? I ask him. He takes off his cut and sits on the side chair, kicking his boots off and propping his feet up. At the club. Some shit went down. He drinks his beer and half watches the TV. Just another reality show I have playing. I drop the puzzle and sip at my beer. Like what? I ask. I don't fully know what goes on at the club behind the scenes, so I don't even know why I asked. He gives me a look that tells me why before he looks away. I sip at the beer as he stays silent. Look, I'm asking as your brother. You look like you're about to blow a gasket. You don't do well with stress. I chuckle once, but I don't really find it funny. He sighs, finishing his beer before he says anything. Like me, he combs at his hair when he's thinking. We got this rival club poking their heads where they don't belong, and we don't really know what they want yet, so Tank is trying to talk with their prez and figure it out before it gets out of hand, he explains. He still looks torn up about it, so I don't know what else he might be hiding. So what do you have to do? I ask him. He sighs. Pretty much not let this turn into some sort of club war. The last one was... Horrible, to say the least. Was that when you disappeared for a few months? I ask. I didn't disappear. I was in their territory. Couldn't really make myself known. But it should be okay now. Tank doesn't like fights like the others. He'll take care of it. Roland pushes it off like it's nothing. And for some reason, the only thing I worry about is Janine. If she knows, she must be worried about her dad. Well, what is it exactly? I ask him. You know how we make our money, he asks. I nod once, leaning forward. He exhales and gives me an odd look. It's about that, pretty much. They want what we have, the runs with a bulk of transport. If they get that, then they have the cartel gangs on their side, and that means more manpower. Right now, we have most of it. I widen my eyes. I never would have guessed that all this goes on. It doesn't seem like it. From the outside in, it really does just seem like a bunch of guys with bikes and leather jackets always hanging out at the bar. Clearly it isn't. 
This sounds like fighting and guys going after each other, ready to draw blood. I don't like how my brother is involved in it, but he is the older one. He seems to know what he's doing. So this is a turf fight, one that's clearly going to be dangerous. How much are you going to be involved in it? I ask him. He drops his head at me and looks away in that older brother protective way that irritates me. Now I know for sure I can't tell him about Janine. He has enough going on. As much as I need to be. Don't worry about me. It's nothing I haven't done before. He laughs once. I flip him off, but accept that he's right, even still. With all this going on, it seems there's only one person I actually want to talk to about this that can help me feel better. Anyway, I'm starving. You want to split a pizza? He asks. We eat way too much pizza, but I also have plans, so you'll have to be unhealthy alone. I smirk at him. He flips me off in return and gets up to go to the kitchen. As soon as he goes, I take out my phone and text Janine. Me. Are you still with your only friend? I smirk, waiting for her to respond. I watch the dots as she types, in anticipation. Janine. No, why? Me. I want to see you. Is your dad home? I ask, and wait for a response. A little longer than last time. It seems she has her phone and then drops it somewhere else. Janine. No, he left for some club thing. Me. I'm coming to get you. I dress hurriedly in jeans and a t-shirt. It's too warm for my cut now, but I know it'll cool down later, and Janine likes to wear it. Even though she has her own now, it's a cute one, but I don't mind that she likes mine. I don't mind a lot of things about her, and that's equal parts exciting and scary. I've never felt like this about a girl before. So, of course, with my luck, it ends up being the one that's kind of off-limits. I've told myself to stop thinking that way about it. She's just a girl. I'm just a guy. I know where she lives, and I'm glad that her dad isn't around right now, even though it also means my brother is getting involved in dangerous shit. She told me to go to the back door, so I pull my bike in past the detached garage and knock on the back door. She comes up soon, and behind the screen door... I take her in like it's been ages since I've seen her, when it really was just less than a day. She has on a pair of shorts and a t-shirt that almost covers it. It's tight around her breasts. I've missed them. I grin at her as she opens the screen door and lets me in. Hi! She smiles widely, brightening up my day. It's barely seven, and it feels like the sun is coming up all over again, even though it's about to set. Hey, Angel! I wrap my hands around her waist and pull her in close to me. Her soft body presses against mine, and I catch her gaze before I kiss her. Softly, at first, I spin her so she leans against a wall, and I press into her. My cock twitches, and we haven't even done anything. She parts her lips to me, and I swipe my tongue against her lips before it collides with hers. I taste her sweet mouth. Able to tell she already had some lemonade today, and I smirk against her lips. So, I guess you missed me. She giggles against me when I release her. I pull back and squeeze her hips, grinning down at her. She has her hair down and curly, framing her round face. Her cheeks are blushed red, her lips a perfect pink color as they plump up. I did. You didn't miss me? I chuckle, kissing the corner of her lips. I glance at the hickey I left, smiling at the sight of having marked her. Of course I did. I'm glad you texted. She sighs, moving around me. I follow her through the house. It doesn't seem like Tank at all, but then again, I don't really know him. She stops in the kitchen. My dad told me he was leaving for a few days this morning. He told me not to throw a party. She giggles. Then she pours me a glass of water and hands it to me. Thanks. And we don't have to have a party, but we can have fun. She laughs. He'll smell your scent in the house or something when he gets back. I drink the water. My mouth gets dry from being on the bike. So should I leave or something? I ask her. She leans on the counter and crosses her arms. I get distracted by her breasts again and drink more water. No, no, you don't have to leave. I'm glad you came. She smiles. Um, are you hungry? I was just about to order some dinner, she says. I chuckle. 
when are you not eating? I smile at her and she shakes her head. Sure, I'll eat. She goes in the drawer and pulls out a ton of takeout menus. My dad doesn't cook, she explains as she sifts through them. I can tell. I finish the water and get up to put the glass in the sink. You like sushi? She asks. I make a face. I tolerate it. She smiles at me and orders it anyway. I listen to her order and I'm mesmerized by her voice. I'm mesmerized by everything she does, even the little things. You want to watch a movie? She suggests. I lean over her on the counter and smirk. Not particularly. Her eyes widen, those pools of brown looking like honey as she looks up at me. She swallows, her cheeks flushing a deeper color. I press my hips closer to her, and she tenses at feeling my cock against her before she relaxes. What do you want to do? Her eyelids flutter closed as I trail my fingers up her thigh. I grip her hips and lift her onto the counter. She gasps and clutches at my arms. This is what I want to do. I kiss her hard, but I have no intention of fucking her on the counter. Not in her dad's house. I'm going to have a little fun. She laces her fingers in my hair, tugging at me as I kiss her more. I slide my fingers in her mess shorts, grazing her pussy through her panties. She has on a pair of cotton ones again, and I rub her until I feel her get wet through them. She moans against my lips, breaking the kiss. I trail my lips down her neck and work at that sweet spot that makes her moan. I tug her panties aside and push two fingers in her. She cries out. Her moans are like music to my ears. I keep going just so I can hear more of them. Spencer, oh my God, she moans, clutching at my arms. I pump her harder, feeling her clench around my fingers. I press my palm to her and rub her clit more, bringing her closer. My cock hardens to unimaginable limits. Her pleasure gives me pleasure. All that matters is her right now, though. I keep going until she is trembling against me, crying out with her orgasm. <sighs> I'm never going to look at this kitchen the same way again, she giggles. I grin at her withdrawing my hand. She watches me as I suck my fingers, tasting her on my skin. She blushes deep crimson, and I grin at her cuteness. I need to, um, change, she mutters, her eyes trailing on me. I chuckle at her as she wobbles off to her room, literally wobbles, I suppose her knees are a little weak. I stay in the kitchen, take my jacket off and wash up before I get comfortable in the living room. Well, I try to, but it kind of reminds me of Tank too much. I should feel bad that I'm in his house, defiling his daughter, but I just don't. It's how much I care for her. I stand back up and look around the room, finding a photo wall by the television. There are a few of her and her mom together, and the three of them. He has more of just her and her mom, and I can tell he still loves her, whoever she is. She looks like her mom, both tan and pretty, with their curly hair. There was only one photo of just Tank and his wife. It seems to be on their wedding day because she's wearing white and straddling him on his bike, and they're smiling at each other. I don't know why I get a glimpse of that with Janine in my head when her dad is probably going to kill me when he finds out. I know he will eventually. There's no way to hide something like this. But it still leaves me with a heavy feeling. It quickly leaves, though, when I feel Janine walk back in the room. Are you snooping? she asks, and I laugh at remembering the first time we met. Not really, I lie. She looks as I remember her in a different pair of shorts. These are fuzzy and gray. Do you mind if we uh, hang out in your room? I just feel like I'm being watched. I fake a shiver and she laughs at me. Sure, let's just wait for the food. It only takes a few more minutes and then we bring it up to her room. It looks as I thought it might. Her bed sheets are vibrant and she has photos and pinups everywhere. It smells like her, too, that sweet scent of flowers and honey or something. She just smells like fresh air. I could inhale her all day. It's good, right? We ate on the foot of her bed, watching an action movie. I close up my container and grin at her. Yeah, I'm impressed. I wash my food down with more water. 
I used to eat it all the time when I was in high school. It was on the way home. Maybe that's when my love of food started. She puts everything in the big brown bag and goes in her bathroom to wash her hands. I come in after her, doing the same. It's cute in here, too. Her bath rugs are a dark purple color and plushed up. Back in her room, we get settled on her bed. Her bare feet rub against my calves as she lays half on me, breathing evenly. So your dad left, I start, knowing I would eventually. She sighs. Yeah, he, um, said it was for club business, but he wouldn't tell me much. She sounds sad, more than I have ever heard her before. I hold her tighter and wonder if I should even tell her this. I don't know how the club business is, how it all works, but Janine is sort of part of the club. I don't think I'm giving out privileged information. When will he be back? I ask, and realize I am shit at sounding like I don't know anything. He said a few days. She sits up and looks at me. I stare in her eyes and smile softly. She presses her hands to my chest and pins me with her soft, prying gaze. Do you know anything about it? She asks me. Uh, about what? I trail my hand down her side and rest on her ass, but she doesn't seem to notice. Spencer, don't baby me like all the others do. She licks her lips and pins her eyes on me again. It undoes me. Only she can do that to me. I'm not... I just... I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you this. I didn't pay attention when they told me all the rules. I laugh once, and she doesn't find it funny. You have to know something about it from your brother. He's the VP. She sits up, separating from me. My hand slips down her thigh, and I graze her soft skin, squeezing up above her knee. Yeah, he is. I roll my eyes at it. Spencer, I asked my dad if it was dangerous where he was going. He wouldn't tell me. Her voice softens, and I watch her eyes widen at me in a way that opens up my heart. Damn, this woman has me in for it. I don't know if it's dangerous or not. My brother was elusive about it. Apparently some club in another town is trying to get at their turf for drugs or whatever it is we do to make our money. They're hoping it doesn't turn into another club war. Tank went to see if he could talk to their prez, I explain. She unfolds slightly, looking at me with this passive expression. I try not to pry her for a response and end up waiting for a while. She rubs at her face, pushing her curly black hair over her forehead as she takes a deep breath. Thanks for telling me, she whispers, giving a sad smile. No problem. Are you worried about your dad? I ask her. She sighs. It might not be the most dangerous thing he's ever done. I guess I'm just not usually here for it, so it is worrying. She swallows, looking off past me. I reach up and bring her back down to me, hugging her to my chest. I cup her face and brush my thumb over her cheekbone pressing under her eye. She half smiles at me, her eyes staring into mine. Do you want a distraction? Chapter 16 Janine When Spencer texted me, I was already thinking about him. After lunch with Adriana, I was a little sad to come home and find Dad gone already. I worried about him. Now I know what Mom was talking about. She didn't have much to say, though and I decided not to tell her that he left. She would probably race over here and pester me for a while, hating being in the house a little bit too. She was never like that with me. She didn't regret being around me. I know this house brings back memories for the both of them. The fact that Dad left it this way should be point enough, but it isn't for her. I forced those thoughts from my mind, and I'm glad that Spencer helped. Having an orgasm on the kitchen counter probably wasn't the only solution, but it worked. I rushed off to clean up and came back to find him looking at our family photos. I cringe a little because I think I looked weird as a kid sometimes. My curly hair and braces didn't help. Dad kept all these family photos displayed, even the more cringe-worthy one of my parents all over each other on his bike. It's sad how much they love each other and can't make it work. I know I'm thinking too far ahead, but I wonder if it will be like that with Spencer, if that happens to us because of all the obstacles in our way. 
I think of all this as I watch him in my living room, the last place I thought I would see him. Spencer is too damned good-looking, his wide shoulders fighting the blue fabric tapering at his narrow waist, the way his jeans fit him in all the right places. I smile inwardly, finally announcing myself. Are you snooping? I ask him. It reminds me of the first time we met, and I smile. I had no idea what would happen back then, but I guess that's the way it always goes. Not really, he teases. I changed into a fuzzy pair of shorts that rub my skin. Nothing compares to him touching me, the way he feels. Do you mind if we uh, hang out in your room? I just feel like I'm being watched. He pretends to shiver, and I giggle at him. Sure, well, let's just wait for the food. I can understand why, though. It's my dad's house, his photos everywhere. I suppose it is kind of weird. The food comes shortly after, from my favorite Asian place. We take it up to my room, and I'm glad that I cleaned earlier. I had been bored. And I'm even happier that I changed the color scheme. Took some of the teddy bears out. It's good, right? I ask him after we eat. I have a thing about eating in my room, so I made us eat on the floor. He didn't protest, which was nice. I picked a random action movie from my collection, something with superheroes. Yeah, I'm impressed. He smirks, drinking the last of his water. He is an incredibly hydrated man. I used to eat it all the time when I was in high school. It was on the way home. Maybe that's when my love of food started. I laugh at myself and start putting the containers away. I wash my hands, too, feeling like wasabi is all over me. Spencer follows me in, and I get sheepish at him being in my bathroom. He doesn't seem to take notice. We move back to the bedroom, and I lay on my bed. I already know I'll never get his scent out of here, and I don't mind. I lay against his chest and listen to his heartbeat, half watching the movie and half letting my mind wander off. So, your dad left. He breaks the silence. I sigh, feeling uneasy at thinking about it. Yeah, um, he said it was for club business, but he wouldn't tell me much. My voice sounds more dejected than I suspected. I know it's because I'm trying not to let it get to me, but it does. He holds me tighter, as if on instinct. I can already tell he knows what is going on. It's why his voice sounded a little off before. When will he be back? He asks me casually, but it doesn't feel all that casual. He said in a few days. I sit up and look at him. He stares back at me and offers a kind smile, one that warms me from the inside out. I press my hands to his chest and feel his warmth radiate through me. Do you know anything about it? I ask him, apprehensive. I see the shift in his expression, the way his lips turn down. I don't know him that well, but I'm starting to. Um, about what? His hand trails down to my ass, but it's the last thing I feel. He knows something. Spencer, don't baby me like all the others do. I moisten my lips and pin him with my gaze. I have also come to tell that looking at me makes him submit in some way. It's probably my oversized eyes. It has an effect on everyone. I'm not... I just... I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you this. I didn't pay attention when they told me all the rules. He chuckles, but I don't laugh back. You have to know something about it from your brother. He's the VP. I sit up fully and separate myself from him. I need a clear mind to have this conversation. His hand slips lower, the heavy, calloused hand that's warm and sets me aflame. I ignore the feeling of his touch to try and focus. Yeah, he is. He rolls his eyes. I don't have a full handle on his relationship with his brother, but it seems fairly regular. The older brother that had to raise the younger one. I've heard the story before, but I don't know what it did to Spencer. Not fully. He seems like he's protecting him, but doesn't know why. I know that it doesn't seem to be for the club, though. Spencer, I asked my dad if it was dangerous where he was going. He wouldn't tell me. I tell him. I feel vulnerable, and usually that would worry me, but not around Spencer. He doesn't look at me like I'm dying or can't handle myself. It's just that he is listening. 
I don't know if it's dangerous or not. My brother was elusive about it. Apparently some club in another town is trying to get at their turf for drugs or whatever it is we do to make our money. They're hoping it doesn't turn into another club war. Tank went to see if he could talk to their prez, he says, and each word hits harder. I only understand it as one little thing that can turn dangerous. The fact that my dad is putting himself out there on the front lines, confronting some other man he doesn't even know, that's scary. I rub at my face as my skin pricks, pulling at my hair. I try to steady my breath and find my heartbeat again, but it doesn't work. Thanks for telling me, I eventually respond, my voice nothing but a soft whisper. No problem. Are you worried about your dad? He asks me, as if he already knows. I sigh as I find my words. It might not be the most dangerous thing he's ever done. I guess I'm just not usually here for it, so it is worrying. I swallow, as if I can take down my nerves that way. It doesn't work. My mouth goes dry, and the silence of the room fills with our breathing. He reaches up and brings me back down to him. I already feel the energy shifting, and I don't do anything to fight it. He just has that effect on me. He cups my face in his hand, his thumb brushing under my eyes as he holds me close. I look into his eyes and feel myself getting lost in them again. I don't know why he affects me so easily. Do you want a distraction? His voice is low, rumbled in his chest with his desire. My body thrums and meets at my pussy, making me throb with desire for him. I spread my legs and rub against him. His thigh and its heat against me makes me shiver. Yes, I whisper. He smirks before kissing me, his tongue grazing mine and then fighting for the upper hand. I slip my fingers into his hair, holding myself closer to him. He deepens the kiss and rolls us over, his body laying between my legs. It feels nice to be on a bed this time. Not that the last was any worse. I'm crazy about you, Janine. I can't stop thinking about you. He moves his lips to my neck, starting to work at another hickey. The others are alive and fresh still. His hand slides up my shirt, gripping my bare breasts. His hard palms rub my nipples, and I start to writhe beneath him. I work to get him out of his clothes, glad to feel his bare skin against me. His hard muscles and warm skin fit perfectly with me. You're so fucking gorgeous. He kisses down my body, dipping between my legs for a minute or so, working me with his mouth. Oh, God. I clutch his hair and hold him close to me, but I mule with disapproval when he leaves me too soon. He pulls back, kneeling in all his naked glory with his hard cock pointed at me. He feels blindly for a condom in his jacket, I think he always comes prepared with them or something. He rolls it on, and I watch as he enters me. He holds my thighs open, stretching me, and I disappear into this moment between us. You feel good, Spencer. So good. I reach out for him, getting his hand. He laces his fingers with mine by my head and holds me close, his thighs holding mine open. He starts to move, fast, thrusting into me without thought. My breasts bob and the bed hits the wall. I cry out as it gets better and better. He reaches down with his other hand and grabs one of my breasts, squeezing my flesh almost to pain, but it feels so good, too. I moan, cry out, beg him not to stop, over and over. I find myself in blinding pleasure with him, his groans matching mine. He grips my hips tighter, fucking me harder. Fuck, Angel. Jesus. He stalls, his hair falling over his brow as he sheens with sweat. I collapse over the edge so sudden I didn't see it coming, and it takes over my body. I clench around him, and soon after he stills inside me, coming so beautifully, and all I do is watch. That was good. So good. I link my arms around his neck and kiss him sliding my tongue against his to taste him. Yeah, give me five minutes. We're doing that again. It's official. I am addicted to Spencer in the best of ways. Maybe even the worst, 
because I cannot get enough of him, and then it just hurts when I can't have him. We hide out in my room for most of the night. We get snacks occasionally, after one movie, and then start the next one. It's nice, like one of the longest dates ever. It only feels so calm because I know my dad isn't here. That's unfortunate, but it's where we're at. We both seem to forget all about that, about everything else but us. It's perfect. I snuggle up next to him after one too many bouts of sex. We showered together, and I didn't get what the hype was until then. He soaped me down. I'll never forget how his hands felt against my skin, warm and calloused, squeezing my flesh like it's his lifeline. He even washed my hair, and that surprised me, but he was good at it. There were no tangles in it when he was finished, and I did the same to him, finding it funny how he now smells like women's body wash, but he didn't seem to care. What he liked most was the hand job I gave him, probably. I didn't even think it was that big a deal anymore, but he loved it. We got out and had ice cream. I'm now half watching this rom-com with him. It feels too good, too perfect. I know better than to let it make me this happy, but I can't help it. I can only hope it isn't temporary. I don't want to leave. Spencer grips me tighter and kisses my forehead. I get all warm inside when he does that. But you have to. I finish for him. I kiss his bare chest and look up at him. He grins down at me and I trace his jawline with my fingers. Yeah, I have an early day tomorrow. He smiles sadly. He runs his hand up my thigh and grips my hips, holding me close to him. The exact opposite of needing to leave soon. My body is still thrumming from all our escapades. As much as I would like to continue them, I'm so sore and tired I can't think of anything else. Okay, I had fun. I hug him tightly, and then he sits up. Me too, he grins. Spencer gets up, wearing his briefs, and I shamelessly watch him get dressed, especially when he has to tuck himself into his jeans, like he's carrying a loaded weapon. It might as well be, from my experience. I'll walk you out. I wrap my blanket around myself and lead him back downstairs. I don't know why I felt like I had to keep a lookout or something when I passed the staircase, but I did. I'll call you tomorrow. Spencer hugs me one last time at the door, and I revel in his warmth against me. Even with everything else, it's his hugs that feel the best. Good night, Angel. He presses a soft kiss to my lips, pulls back to look me in the eye, and then he's gone. I sigh, a bit sadly, at him leaving, and occupy myself by cleaning up a bit. I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm removing all traces of Spencer, but it feels that way. I just like to clean when I'm thinking, and I keep thinking a lot about Spencer. About how I am going to tell my dad about him, because I know that I need to. After tonight, I don't want to just sneak around with him anymore. I want to be able to date him like regular people do. He'll come around, eventually. I know he will. Back in my room, I gather all our trash and throw it in the garbage outside before coming back and trying to fall asleep. I don't even know where Spencer lives so I don't know how long it will take him to make it home, but I text him to make sure. Me, tell me when you make it home safe. I switch to texting Adriana, filling her in, and she pries with every question in the book. She even offers her apartment for us to use when my dad gets back. I almost want to take her up on it. I decided I don't want to sneak around like that, as fun as it may be. My heart patters still when Spencer texts me back. Spencer, I'm home. See you tomorrow, Angel. I grin, wondering when he decided he would see me tomorrow. But as long as I see him every day, I'm not complaining at all. Chapter 17 Spencer I don't know if saying I am the happiest man alive is an exaggeration, but I feel like I'm coming close to that. Janine makes me happy. I never got that. Growing up the way I did, I never had that option, and now I can do whatever I want. What I want is Janine. I just wish it didn't have to be so damn complicated. I leave her house late at night and come back to Roland in the living room. I thought you were leaving, is my greeting. 
I walk around the television. It's dark, and the lights flicker over him, lounging on the couch in his boxers. Tomorrow. But Tank went out there first to see if he needed me. And he does? I ask. I sit on the arm of the couch and give him a long look. Yep, it's not a big deal. It's cool that you worry, though. I laugh. It's not cool, and I'm not worried. I'm just asking. I shrug it off, but really, he's my big brother, and I do worry, and he seems to sense that, too. He doesn't say anything because we're brothers. It's just how we are. Yeah, whatever, dude. His eyes go back to the TV, and I'm sure he isn't even watching it. Is club business confidential? Like, can we tell other people about it? I ask. I thought about it for a long time before asking him because I wanted to be sure. I'm still unsure about telling Janine. Even though she's involved in the club and whatnot, I wouldn't want to say something I wasn't supposed to. I just couldn't keep it from her, the way she looked so sad and dejected about her dad. Uh, not really. Why? He answers. I shrug. No reason. Just wondering how things really work in the cult and whatnot. I grin. He laughs and shakes his head at me. You're gonna have to stop calling it a cult at some point, since you're in the club and all. Okay, eventually. I lie. Where were you anyway? He asks. I have a curfew? I deflect. He gives me one of his looks until I relent. I was out with a friend. He laughs. You have friends? I reach my leg out to kick his. Fuck off, I do. He flips me off and laughs again. Who is this friend of yours? As long as it's not another drug dealer or some shit, he says more seriously. I frown at him and he fake apologizes. She's not... I slip, not meaning to say it was a she. Oh, a female friend. He laughs with one of his ugly snorts. Leave me be. It's not my fault you're not getting any. I don't know where you got that false information from, Spence. He chuckles. I can deduce. I snicker when I don't really know if I'm right or not. It's not like we keep tabs on each other that way, but I know him well enough, and it doesn't seem like it. I'm going to bed. I've had a long night. I stand. I bet you have. He reaches out and tugs my shirt, like he used to do when we were kids. It yanks my neck, and I curse him as I walk off to my room. I smiled as soon as I saw a text from Janine on my phone. It's sweet how she worried about me. I tell her that I got back safe and already start planning what I'm going to do with her tomorrow. I have no idea where to take her that's kind of safe. I don't know where most of the club guys hang out yet. I'm running out of places in the woods to bring her. Either way, I know that I have to see her. I work at the shop tomorrow, so I don't mind if we end up just hanging out in the back of my truck or something. As long as I'm with her, it doesn't matter. I strip off and get into bed, thinking of Janine as I fall asleep. I'm leaving! Roland barges in my room way too early, and I can already tell. Why are you making it sound like you're dying? I groan into my pillow, rolling over and shielding my eyes from the sun coming in the window. At least don't forget to lock up whenever you leave. I love this house more than you. He smirks, looking over me by the door. See ya. I flip him off and he leaves my room with a laugh. I get up soon after, going to take a piss and brush my teeth. I take my phone with me to the living room and text Janine. Me. Good morning, Angel. I wait a few minutes as I make my coffee and find something to eat. Janine. Why are you up so early, freak? Me. To talk to you. I grin to myself and settle on dry oatmeal before I think of a better idea. Me. I'm coming to pick you up so we can eat breakfast off each other. I don't even check her reply before I get dressed and take off on my bike. I pull up to her house, sort of checking for Tank's bike, and I don't see it. We go to breakfast at a diner before we go to the shop. Unfortunately, I couldn't eat breakfast off her, but that's beside the point. I get to spend all day with her as we head to the shop. Tell me more about you. I feel like I don't know much, Janine tells me. We're halfway through the day, having folded and stocked merchandise all morning. To be honest, I did most of the work, but I didn't mind it. 
I don't really want to talk about this, but the look she's giving me with her eyes all big and brown makes me give in. You know about me, I grin at her. She sits up on the counter, resting her hands at her sides. My eyes drift down to her breasts, like they always do, pressing against the fabric of her shirt. It's a light pink color that bounces off her tan skin. I stare at her, at how her curly hair fans out around her and the way her jeans hug her ass. Licking my lips, I wish we weren't talking at all. There are customers coming in and out of the shop, so I can't really do much. I mean, yeah, I do, a little, but not stuff about where you grew up and your favorite color. She chews at her lip, and even though thinking of my childhood takes me to a bad place, I grin at her, trying to dodge it. I lean my hip against the counter and look at her. My favorite color is green, but not the forest kind, the apple kind, I say. She tilts her head at me and gives me one of her prying looks. Her eyes widen as she pouts her lips, and then I'm pretty much useless. Spencer, why don't you ever talk about it? Her voice softens. I sigh and run my fingers through my hair. I just don't like to talk about it. It's not a good story. Well, it doesn't have to be a good story for me to want to hear it. She runs her hand down my arm and quickly pulls it away, remembering where we are. I get a tight feeling in my chest, wondering how I can even put this into words. This was the last place I thought I would be doing it. All I've done since coming here is do things when I didn't think I would have to do them, like growing up, getting myself out of bad situations. The club did that. Roland did that for me. Now Janine is making me face the last thing I tried to run from. We didn't. Roland and I grew up in a trailer park. Our parents were absolute deadbeats. I only remember a little bit of it. Roland, he got the worst of it. So when we ended up in foster care, he took care of me most of the time because those people sucked too. I didn't have a childhood. I don't even know what to call it. I exhale, my mouth going dry and neck tight. I hate talking about stuff like that. There are memories that I don't bother to recount until they force their way in. Or when Janine coaxes them out of me. I'm sorry, Spencer, that you went through that. She softens her voice and gives me a soft look, her eyes relaxing as she looks at me. I smile a bit at her and wish I could hold her close, kiss her, and be anywhere but here right now. Thanks. I mean, it's okay now, but sometimes I feel worse for Roland. He had to grow up way too fast. I worry about him because he thinks he can do everything, when he can't sometimes. Like where he is now. She finishes. Yeah, pretty much, I answer. We stay in silence for a while, and I just appreciate her company, for all that's worth. But I can tell she's not done with her line of questioning. I cross my arms and wait. She looks at me with this softness in her eyes that I haven't seen before. I'm learning about her, too, so much, every day. What were you doing before you joined the club? I was here the last time Rafe left and everyone was talking about him going after his brother or something. I chuckle once. It was a few months ago, but I remember it. Yeah, that was the worst shit I got myself into. And I've done a lot of things I wasn't supposed to do. Just... I shake my head and try to figure out how to word this. I hung out with the wrong crowds. I never did drugs or any of that kind of shit, but I sold them. And Roland bailed me out of a lot of bad situations. The last one was so bad, I thought I wasn't just going to jail, but get attacked by a gang and still owe them money. I laugh once. It's funny now that I'm not in that situation, but it wasn't so funny then. Spencer? She giggles once, and I'm surprised that she did. Then I remember who her dad is and think talking about drugs isn't that much of a deal breaker. Yeah, I know, but you asked. That's what I was doing. I sigh, standing up. I lean my hands over the counter and look out at the empty shop before I move closer to her and inhale her scent. It calms me when I feel like part of me is getting messed up inside, recounting all the bad parts of my past. Yeah, I asked. I was just curious. What about ex-girlfriends? She asks. I look at her and laugh aloud. Well, I just meant, not that I'm saying I'm your girlfriend now, but shit. She laughs to herself as her cheeks flush crimson. 
I laugh at her, too, and hope she pulls herself together. I stand close enough to her that my hip hits her thigh, and my cock resting in my jeans finds a nice, warm place to be. I know what you meant, and I don't do the girlfriend thing, never have before, but I consider you my girlfriend. Should I have played a boombox outside your window and held up a sign? Circle yes or no, I chuckle. She grins widely, and her blush turns to a flush in her cheeks as her eyes brighten. It feels good to make her this happy. I just hope that I can keep doing it. No, this is fine. Do you have any ex-boyfriends I should know about? I lick my lips, watching her blink rapidly. Not really. You forget I'm only twenty. There are sixteen-year-olds getting married. It's valid. I grin. She shrugs her shoulders and gives me a long look. So, if you weren't doing the actual drugs, what did you do? She asks, with her curious tone in place. I kept watch, spied on the other gangs. I moved quietly. I smirk. It was my only talent, or usefulness at the time. Hmm. Is that why Rafe thought you would be good in the club? They have guys that do that, you know. Yeah, I... I laugh once. <laughs> I know. He started pestering me about it. I lose my grin at the memory. Now I feel kind of bad about saying I didn't want to be involved in the club. And if I was, maybe I could have been with Roland instead of worrying about him. There's a fine line. Why didn't you take him up on it? Wow, you are full of questions today. I lean away from her and take a breath. She sighs and shrugs, not giving up the question. I didn't want to mess up his place at the club if I messed up, I say. It really was that simple. I get that. So, if you're done with your line of questioning, maybe we go take a break? Chapter 18 Janine Take a break? I look at Spencer with his blazing eyes and handsome face, my body reacting already. I was hesitant about asking him all those questions, but I just wanted to get to know him better. I wanted to calm all my wandering thoughts. I never thought he was a bad guy or anything, but knowing he had a past like that was a little worrying. But now I know there was nothing to worry about. Yeah, Angel, a break. He licks his lips and gives me that hot look of his, setting my body on fire. I bite down on my bottom lip and cross my legs, trying to quell the pulse there. I wish I could, but somebody could walk in at any minute. Someone from the club, I sigh sadly. This guy makes me horny all the time. It's no good. Right, forgot about that. It will pass, and we can do that later. I giggle softly. He smiles at my reaction. Maybe one day I'll learn how to be some effortless, sexy vixen, but today is not that day. Later, then. The rest of the day passes, and we close up. We decide to grab a bite to eat together before he drops me off back at my car. We have our fun in the back seat twice, and then I go home without him. That's why I was surprised when he comes by later. What's wrong? I ask him. He comes in the back door, and I regard him carefully. He looks haggard, and he isn't wearing his cut. Your dad called. Oh, my God! I freak out instantly. He calms me down, though. I thought he found out about us or something. We move to the couch, and he takes my hand. He asked for my help, him and Roland. At first I wasn't going to, but I thought, you know, I joined the club for my brother. Make up for lost time, I guess. People don't usually need me for anything, but he does. They do, he finishes. He seems sure of everything that he says, and that's what makes me worry less. But when I realize what he is really saying, You're leaving, to go help them, I say. He looks me in the eye and nods. Yeah, but it won't be for long, I promise. Tank is my dad, Spencer. I know you can't keep that promise. That's why my mom left. She didn't want to deal with him leaving and not knowing when he was coming back, I say sadly. Are you saying you... No, I cut him off. I'm in this with you, Spencer. I just... Be careful. I cup his face, rubbing my palm against his stubble. His skin is so warm and comforting. I never thought about what it would take to be involved with an MC guy. Now I'm about to find out. 
I love you, Janine. You know that. I know it's quick and we halfway know each other, but I just, I love you. I do. And I'll be careful so I can come back to you. He cups my face and kisses me before I can respond. The kiss has all our emotions in it together, our tongues swirling as we taste each other. I can't get enough of him, and I don't know if that means I love him back. But he breaks the kiss and leaves before I can figure that out. Adriana and I meet for lunch as we do every other day. Spencer left three days ago, and I haven't seen him since, haven't talked to him either. I know he probably can't around the other guys, and he's probably busy but I wish I could have told him how I felt. When are you going to talk to him? She asks me. I sip my lemonade and smile sadly. I don't know. When he gets back, probably. What if your dad breaks him and makes him talk? She smiles sadly, trying to get me in better spirits. I told her everything that happened, at saying I love you too in the darkness after he left. I'm no good at that stuff. I never had to learn how to be. Then he may not come back. I sadly laugh once. It will be fine, Janine. Don't worry. I look at her sadly. I will worry about my dad, my boyfriend, all of it. It's the first time I said that out loud, and it feels good, as much as it feels like suffocation. Your dad has done this before. They'll all be okay, she assures me. I let her keep me company until she has some other errands to go about. I just go back home and lay on the couch, watching movies. It's not like Spencer left and is never coming back. It will be like this when I go off to college anyway, but for some reason, it hurts all the same. I love him so much and so fast. It's scary, but it doesn't make it any less true. I want to be with him, and I decide I have to tell my dad about us. I'll tell Spencer what I'm doing first, but I know I have to tell him. I'm about to pick another sad movie to watch when my phone buzzes, and it isn't the ringtone I have for Adriana. I completely lose my mind when I see it's Spencer. Spencer, come outside. I frown at my phone, thinking he is sleep-deprived or something. Me, what? Spencer, outside, Angel, before the neighbors see. I laugh and get up, swarmed with delight as I go to the back door, our usual place. I find him leaning against his bike on the side of the garage, under the moonlight. His cut is slick black leather, shining against his frame, his dark jeans making him look like a model. What are you doing here? I run to him, jumping into his arms. He laughs, wrapping me up tight in his arms as he kisses my cheek, my neck. I turn to kiss him our lips meeting fully. I told you I would be back. I missed you. He kisses me again, setting me on my feet. I wrap my arms around his neck and smile. I love you. It comes barreling out of me and I can't stop it. I should have told you before you left. It just took me. I missed you too. I giggle nervously. He smiles at me as if with awe and I feel myself blushing. I figured... And I still love you, too. That didn't change when I left. He chuckles. Oh, where is my dad? Is he still gone? I ask. No, he's back. Him and my brother are updating the rest of the execs. But I just had to see you. He cups my face, and I swarm with warmth when he kisses my forehead. I'm glad you came. I was so worried. What did they make you do, anyway? I ask. It racked my brain the whole time he was gone. Some of the guys are passive, others literally go scare and beat people up. I wondered what he was. I kept watch, got some intel. Turned out to be helpful. You should be proud. He smirks, gripping my ass. I am proud. So you can't come inside then? I sigh. Probably not, but we can meet up tomorrow. I nod, reaching up to kiss him. He kisses me back immediately. It is slow and tender until it grows with intensity. I feel him in my core and wish he could come inside. Suddenly I want that thrill, but I know better. His tongue swirls against mine and I taste his warmth, sliding against his hard body. God, I really love him so much. I don't even know what to do. So much that I don't notice bright headlights and the roar of a bike until it all stops. I jump away from Spencer, squinting into the darkness as I pant. 
He turns the same time as me. What the fuck is going on? My heart freezes in my chest when my dad gets off his bike and roars at the top of his lungs. Dad! I start, but I don't know what to even say. You get the hell away from my daughter! He shouts at Spencer. Tank, I can explain. Spencer walks toward him and I stop him. I've never seen my dad this angry, boiling at the surface. No, don't. I stop him, grabbing his hand. Dad, just relax. Relax? He barely looks at me and keeps coming for Spencer. You son of a bitch! Dad, please, you don't understand. Tears stream down my face, but it's no use. I don't understand. He took advantage of you. He reaches Spencer before I can get to either of them. He grabs him by the shirt and punches him hard in the face. I cry out, knowing it wouldn't be a good idea to try and separate them. Stop, Dad! Spencer stumbles and gets back up again, squaring off to my dad. I didn't take advantage of her. He grabs at his face. I love her. He holds his hands up, but my dad is still fuming. Bullshit! I trusted you! I asked you to look after her, and this is what you do? Dad! No, Janine, stay out of this. The way he yells makes me afraid to say anything else. You are finished. If I ever see your face again, you're a dead man. No, I whimper, wiping at my tears. Spencer turns to me, his eyes the saddest I've ever seen. I already know that he blames himself. I'm sorry, Angel. He moves to get back on his bike, reaching for me. I reach for him, but Tank shoves him away and grabs me. Get the hell out of here. Out of town, if you know what's good for you. I grab Dad's hand. No. He quiets me again, and I tremble in my own skin. Spencer looks at me until he gets on his bike, and once again over his shoulder before he drives off. I collapse into my tears and pull away from my dad. They're bad guys, Janine. You don't want that, Dad says. He shakes off his hand, and I glare at him. No, Spencer is good, and we love each other. It's you that's bad. Listen. He reaches out for me again. No, I won't listen. I hate you. I shove against his chest and run back into the house, slamming my room door behind me. I cry and cry until there's no cry left in me. Chapter 19 Janine I feel like a zombie in my own body. For days, I forget how to simply exist. It gets better, but I still feel numbed and lost. I wanted to have control over everything. I wanted to sit my dad down and tell him when he wouldn't have to find out the way he did. I'm sure seeing us kissing wasn't easy for him, but he just got so angry. I don't know how to face him. And Spencer. I don't know what to do. He might have left. I'm not sure, but I love him too much to get him into any more trouble. I can't be the reason he comes back and risks his life. However serious Dad was, I don't know. A whole month passes of missing him and avoiding my dad and barely talking. Adriana comes over, but even she doesn't know what to do. A standoff with an MC press and new member doesn't just happen every day. I'm completely lost. Jeannie, it's me. Dad knocks on my door and tries to talk to me like he usually does every day. Go away! I close my eyes, laying on my bed, and the visual of him knocking Spencer onto his feet comes into view. Spencer leaving with a split lip, blood streaming down his face. Your mom is here. I almost forgot she was coming. The 4th of July. She said she would come. It's the only reason I get out of bed, go to meet her in the living room. Dad lingers, and Mom gives him a hard look. I already told her what happened, punching and all. Leave us be, Arnold. Is that too much to ask? Mom shoes him away. Dad gives me a sad look, and he actually looks a bit dejected, but he leaves all the same. Mom. I hug her tight, tears clouding my breath. Oh, honey, I'm glad to see you. She pulls back, looking like sunshine in her yellow dress. She sits me down, and I talk to her about everything. She listens, and offers me advice whenever she can. I really love him, Mom. It's not fair. I know. Your dad. 
I, I'll talk to him, but I always said this about that club. Their rules and their toxic masculinity, sometimes it's charming, other times it's stupid. She smooths my hair and wipes my tears. I know. Are you staying here? I look at her suitcase by the door. Yeah, I actually came here to make up with your dad. I hope you're not mad at me. She smiles sadly. Why would I be mad? That's what I hoped would happen. Yeah, well, there are some conditions, but we can talk about that later. I nod. Yeah. You should make up with your father, too. You haven't said you hated him since you were nine. She laughs once. Oh, he told you that. I glance at her. Hmm. I sigh. I guess I will. Despite being mad at him, I have missed him. Good. I'm going to get groceries because I know it's a disaster here. She leaves, and I reluctantly go find my dad. He's in his office, stewing with a beer and staring at a wall of photos. Dad, I announce myself. He turns to me and smiles softly. Jeannie. He stands, and I step back against the door, crossing my arms. I'm sorry, Jeannie. I, I didn't know. I told the guys that you... I was just so pissed, but I thought about it, and I think you should come by the club tonight. It will help explain. I frown. Explain? I wipe at my tears and shake my head at him. Dad, you wouldn't listen to me. I know you were shocked to see us, but I'm your daughter, and you wouldn't just listen to me. I was wrong to say that I hate you. I don't. But I am afraid of you now, I whisper. His face falls. Oh, no, Jeannie, I lost it. But that's not me, I swear. Your mom, she came back to me. We can be a family again because she knows that's not me anymore. Why? I ask him. Just come to the club tonight, please, he begs. I trail off in thought and give it a minute. He is still my dad, even though Spencer is gone, and I don't know if I can see him again. I later agree to come to the club for whatever it is, hoping I don't break down from the memory of Spencer when I do. Chapter 20 Spencer I came home in a blind rush. My face was half smashed in, but all I could think about was Janine and how she was doing. I feel like it was my fault if I'd just waited, but I thought Tank would still be gone for hours. I had no idea he would come back and find us. He did. And now shit has really hit the fan. When Roland found me, he was absolutely pissed. I had to tell him what happened, as a member of the club, too. We all just got back from a two-day sting, and I helped them stop another club from trying to get in on our turf. Tank called me a watchdog or some shit. Sparrow. So I had a club name. And then it was fucked up all on the same night. My face hurt for days until it healed up, and I barely left the house. Roland didn't kick me out or anything, as my brother, but he was pissed. He spent a month or so trying to talk to Tank until it all just stopped, and I'm not sure why. We don't talk much, so I don't ask. All I think about is my Janine. I miss her so fucking much. I know if I talk to her, I will just make it hurt more, if we can't see each other. So I refrain, just like in the beginning. I wonder what would have happened if we never got involved with each other, but she made me a better man. I'll always be glad that I fell in love with her. You need to come to the club tonight. Roland walks in my room without knocking. I don't have it in me to argue anymore. For what? I look up at him, putting my crossword puzzle down. Just, you have to come. He looks worried, and I don't know why. What is it, bro? I stand up. He firms his face and looks less grim, half-smiling. It's Tank. He, uh, he stepped down. What? He's leaving the club to make up with his wife, so that means I'm the new prez. He's telling the club tonight, and that's why I want you to come. I don't know whether to be more invested in the fact that Janine's parents are back together, but I still hate Tank for what he did to us. But I thought I wasn't in the club anymore. Tank never told anyone. He... He never told anyone. He wasn't. Whatever Janine said must have got to him. 
I told him I loved her that night, but he didn't seem like he was listening. I laugh once. Roland chuckles and steps inside. Well, as far as the club knows, you've been keeping watch on the other club. What's tonight, then? He gives me a look. It had to be Janine, huh? He laughs. I grin at the thought of her. Yeah, it had to be. You don't get it, man. You've never been in love. I guess not. Just come to the club. I end up agreeing, finding myself in the lot a few hours later. The sun is setting and it's already committed to memory. I haven't been back in a long time and it feels like home, which sucks because for a minute there, I thought I lost it. I want his... Spencer. I hear her voice and I think I'm hallucinating before I turn and see my Janine. She's smiling, looking gorgeous as ever in her jeans and blouse, a cute frilly purple thing. I smile and walk over to her, hugging her immediately. I'm so sorry, Angel. I missed you so much. I inhale her scent, hold her body close. I missed you too, but my dad is right behind me, so you should watch your hands. She giggles, pulling back. I grin, holding her waist instead. I still kiss her, though, because it has been too damn long. I was summoned here. I have no idea what's going on, I tell her. Me neither, she shrugs, pulling back from me. She looks over at a woman in the parking lot by her car. A few moments later, Tank gets out of the car. I realize why she looked familiar. It's her mom. Am I about to get another shiner? I hold her hand. I hope not. She holds herself close to me. I look at Tank when he gets close enough, and he nods me aside from Janine. I look back at her and smile to reassure her. Tank, I'm sorry for going behind your back. But that's all I'm sorry for. I love your daughter, and I won't ever hurt her, I swear it. His eyes darken, but his expression softens. I believe you. I'm not sorry about knocking you off your feet because you still deserved it. I manage a laugh, and he smiles halfway. Why didn't you tell everyone? I was hiding out for a month. Because of what you did. That other club, they've been after us for years. I trusted you to find out what was happening, and you did. That's why you're still in the club. That kind of thing is hard to come by. I nod once. But you're not in the club anymore. I finish. He nods once, looking over at Janine and her mom. No, I'm not. I have a family, and man to man, I'm in love too. Gotta make sacrifices. Your brother, he'll take care of it, though. I half smile. He sure will. And just so we are very clear... He starts walking back to them, and I follow. You better not hurt my daughter. Dad, Janine whines. I take her hand and chuckle, even though I'm still a bit scared inside. I look in her eyes and smile. I'll never hurt her. Epilogue, Janine. My dad got up in front of his whole club and told them he was stepping down. I was shocked, as everyone else, but he really meant it. They all cheered when he went over to kiss my mom, but I just gagged a bit. Spencer was with me, though, and even though I was a bit apprehensive about things, he just won me over. I know it would have been hard to talk when we thought all hope was lost, but now we can be together, and it's perfect. My dad and I made up, which is nice, because we all live in the same house now. And I feel like I'm ten years old again, with two happy parents. Dad doesn't hold it over Mom's head that he left the club. They still talk about it. I know it'll take some adjusting. They seem to be doing fine. Spencer even comes over for dinner sometimes, and Dad stops looking at him with daggers. They actually have things in common. I spend the amazing summer I planned with him, falling in love every day, over and over, until I have to leave. We knew it would be hard, but I didn't have much choice. I wasn't going to switch colleges to be closer to home, and it was a little too soon for him to follow me there. Plus, it's only a few hours away. I see him once or twice a month and soak up as much of him as I can. I love college. It's fun learning something new and starting a new phase in life. Mom definitely cried when I left, and Dad probably waited until I was gone, but all the same. I'm happy today because it's the day I can see Spencer. He rides in on his bike, 
making a public show for all the student union to see, and I happily run up to him with everyone watching. Hello, Angel, he murmurs against my lips, then kisses me with all the love in the world he has for me. I missed you. I hug him tightly, jumping down to take him in. It's the winter now, so he has a sweater on under his cut. I smooth his hair back and cup his face. I missed you too. We have a lot of homework? He asks. It's the weekend before the break, and we planned on riding back together. Not particularly, I giggle. Good. He kisses me again, and we go back to my dorm room. I don't have a roommate, but the small living space was still hard to get used to, especially when Spencer comes over. He strips my clothes off as soon as we walk in the door, and I do the same to him. We don't waste any time getting naked and reacquainted with each other. I miss him more every time, and every time it just seems to get better. We go at it for what seems like hours before we lay down together. So I was thinking, Spencer starts, hmm, that we get hitched. He laughs, and I know he's joking. <laughs> what are you talking about, Spencer? I grin. He looks at me with bright eyes and smiles. You should move in with me, back home, I mean. I just got a place with a sex swing. I swat him and cut him off. You want me to move in with you? He chuckles, holding me tighter around my breasts. They're still his favorite thing. Yeah, I want you to move in with me. And just to be clear, I'd also like to marry you one day and have kids and spend the rest of my life with you. But we can get to that later. He laughs, rolling us over so he is between my legs again. Spencer, you're insane. I giggle. For you? I sigh, knowing I'll have to convince my dad first, but he's learned to back off in that department. Okay, I'll move in with you, but you have to do all the packing and unpacking. I need to rest from school. I laugh and kiss him, glad that I make him so happy. I think it's all we can do, make each other happy every day. And if I get to do that for the rest of my life, then I'm not complaining at all. This has been Sparrow, an MC romance, Outlaw MC Book One, written by Ethan Egeroff, narrated by Randy Fuller, copyright 2019 by Ethan Egeroff, production copyright by Ethan Egeroff.